stressing out for a blessing now. Make you guessing now. It's the best right now. I'm built for hard times. Darkest days are my shine. I'm a sign to the sun. Yeah, I'm every day stressing now for a blessing now. Make you guessing now. It's the best right now. I'm built for hard times. Darkest days are my shine. I'm a sign to the sun. Yeah, I'm every day just fine. I'm gonna get here before I start talking about these uh, buck dogs. These uh, STP buck dogs. Pat Patrick buck dogs, however you wanna say it, you know. Uh, but, you know, we're gonna build on them. Some of the best dogs to ever do it. Yeah, yeah, it's good to dissect them a little bit going in you know we'll probably be on another topic on another day you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. get some recognition some of the dogs that was that was uh you know some of them everybody don't know everybody don't know you know how good of a producer buck was or wasn't so you know we just want to touch on a few Jordy King, peace. Peace, Jordy King, my UK brother. What it do, fam? Oh yeah, and I appreciate it. I don't know, I don't know what that is translated, but appreciate you. Yeah, that's that's like a, uh, that's like an American uh, dollar and shit. Lamont Grant, peace, King. He said, "I'm over fifty. I'm still getting great p- tips from the panel." Appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, man. I've been man, I've been around these dogs since since I was a kid, man. You know what I'm saying? As long as I can fire all my memories go back. All the memories I got, I got bulldogs. And I still learn stuff every time I come talk to these brothers. I learn something different. And that's how it's supposed to be. Let's get let's get Cal G up in here. What's going on, fam? What's going on, man? Oh Luke, man. Luke. You know. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah, you sound you sound good on my end. Right on. I'm moving around, man. Uh, what y'all chopping up? No, we just uh, talking about uh nothing right now. We just getting started, but we are gonna get into some of the uh, buck dogs. I got uh, Buster Brown on the list. Uh, Abraham's Bull, uh, Buck Buckets and Leaky. We got Red Buck on the list. Uh, Saint Benedict's Bon Bon. Just just some buck dogs. Nothing in particular. I'm moving around. I'm headed to uh, go see my babies, man, right now. Um, so I might jump off. I might jump back on if that's cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nah, we'll just get you in there, ask yeah. you a couple questions or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, I ain't... Uh, I ain't no pedigree expert guru like you guys, man. Nah, it's all uh, good, man. We just all, man. we just I talking know. dogs. I, yeah, I, know I know the dogs. I know the dogs, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, yeah, we can we can definitely get down on it though. What was, what, what, what was some of the dogs? I, what, what was some of the dogs you grew up on? Just so we can get. A, I, I had. A I grew line. up on. Uh, I grew up on the uh, Sorrel dogs, actually, man. Okay. okay. That's what I had. A lot of that shit. Um, so, so you talk about you talk about in the eighties and stuff. 
that no at like 90 what was that like fucking 93 nine, nine, 90 yeah it had to be like 90 night no man it was later than that bro it was like maybe 90 when did i have these fucking dogs um you got me thinking now shit my kids are my that no this had to be like in the 2000s bro uh because my kids are what 18 so what was this uh 2020 yeah so it had to be in like 2099 you know somewhere up in there when i first got into the dogs um i had uh some some uh a buddy of mine was bringing me dogs from uh st louis he say they was Red boy, red, red, uh, old family red dogs. The that girl I sent, that fine girl I sent you a picture of, Buck. Yeah, she's supposed to be still from that line, but I think that dude mixed some shit into them dogs because wow. they the daddy looked like a bully. Wow, he got that big, wide ass chest. Like that dog don't look like a. It, I know it's not a pit bull. What what dog come on now? It's a dog that a buddy of mine, he bred, oh. he bred some shit and he was stuck on, you know, he was stuck on the looks of the dogs, man. Right, right. And uh, he started breeding for a different purpose, man. So, yeah, uh, that's kind of what direction the dogs went in that he had. But, yeah, all the, hold on, man, I'm driving. Uh, all the dogs that, fuck. come on, man. Let me yeah, get he said Timberton, Bon Bon, Lefty. Was one of the best buck dogs, best buck shit I've fed. Hey, definitely, I've had uh, a lot of that Timberton stuff um, through that Untouchables gym. You know that dog was, I believe, he was right off Timberton. Yeah, he was. I think he was a son of Timberton, uh, the gym dog, or he was pretty damn close. I got to look at his okay. pet again. Oh, he's out of there. Hey, what the brother say? Uh, Harold Trump asked a question in the chat. What'd he say? Harold Trump, he says, uh, can I ask a question? He said, once uh, said, 178 said, you need a guard dog to watch your American Terriers. He says, "Why is uh, that area all dog protective of its surroundings?" He said, "Why is that?" I, I don't, I'm not sure of the question. What you mean? I yeah, think you, I think you missed the word, or you, you something. I want to know exactly what you mean, brother. He he rephrased it. Oh uh, yeah, I guess he said he need a guard dog to watch your American te terrier. Why is that area all dogs protective? Of their surroundings. Uh, well, I, yeah, well, yeah. well, the American Pit Bull Terrier, historically, if they, you know, most of the time, these are not human aggressive dogs. These are dogs that are uh, submissive to humans and they're animal aggressive. So that's why it's easier for a motherfucker to come over into your yard and steal your dog. Think about some of the greatest dogs in 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 the history of the breed been stolen. How they get stolen if they so. You know what I'm saying? If they man aggressive, how they get stolen? You know what I mean? You know, uh, and he, sometimes even when they man aggressive, I heard Bolio was a man biter to some degree, and uh, he was stolen. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, fucking uh, Eli was stolen. I heard he was a man biter. He got stolen too. Fucking, um, but I don't know if he really was. I just heard that. But uh, uh, Grand Champion Art, of course, got stolen. A lot of dogs get stolen. You know. This this is easy dogs to steal. You know, they come wagging yeah. their tail. They love people, you know what I'm saying? They love attention. That's why you gotta have you a sometimes you get your yard big enough, you know. A lot of people, uh a lot of big dog, uh, old school dog mates to have other breeds watching their territory, watching their land and shit. You know. You know, they might have uh you know, well I know a few people who did it. I know Pat Patrick did. I know um, a few other people did.
Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what happened to uh Cal G. Uh he probably he probably lost. I, I, I'm, I'm here, bro. I'm here, bro. I'm oh, just okay. uh right. yeah, I you got, can hit uh, the you can hit the mute when the things when they get loud back there. Yeah, I'm on the road and uh they out here. Oh yeah. Now you know you know you gotta be safe out there on them roads, man. Sure. Unfortunately. Sure. What they what yeah. they say it's it's uh shit. A five what what they say five 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 times more of a chance, you know, just bullshit numbers. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So nah, definitely, man. If you need to get out of here, you know what y'all what y'all talking about, man biters, man biters. What was the uh, I can't see the questions, bro. Nah, nah. We uh Man, we I'm talking about getting the, back yeah, in here. Yeah, we talking about um dogs, uh that guard dogs that people use to protect their yard, protect keep the uh game dogs from getting stolen and shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nah, I think I think that's a good idea. If you can get a trained dog that you know is smart enough to know the perimeter and stuff and not Fuck up shit. I think that's a great idea. You know, mm -hmm. probably yeah. get them get them right away. Like when I when I got my uh, property, like a cat, a cat is essential. Also, you know, because that that motherfucker's gonna keep the rodent population down. You know what I'm saying? So that that's essential too. So that those are things that you probably should get right away rather than wait two, three years and then decide to to get a guard dog. You know what I'm saying? Now you got to raise them up another two years, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. You want the guard dog to be the oldest one, right? Uh, I mean, you just want him to be old enough to, to do his right. job. You know what I'm saying? That's what I would think. Jordan King, salute. Appreciate that, fam. Much love, Jordan King. Yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah, kind, that, that's kind of how my girl is. She kind of like the guard dog. See, you guys all got yards. I got uh, my dogs in the house, man. So I got kennels in the basement. Uh, and my girl kind of like the the one that roam the house. You know, when I'm away, I know I know shit cool. She eight years old though, man. She's an old girl, so. Ain't yeah, got no yeah. yard yet. I'm building. I'm building. Hopefully, I can get that. Oh, yeah. Let's get down to this old, this old buck dog. Yes, indeed. And what some, you, of, the, and you, some you, of the good dogs that that came behind him. Let me let me pull up his pad real fast, just so I could look look up his little arsenal. While we on the subject, you know, mm -hmm. good source of uh, your Patrick blood. You know, a lot of people, you know, they felt that if they had it coming through Buck, you know, it was better, you know, coming through, you know, Buck than other things. You know, it's all a myth. It's all mythical. But, you know, the sayings are sayings and, you know. It's good to know him. Right. What do you think about the uh, controversy over Buck's pedigree? Some people say he was off a of, uh, little tater, and other people say he was off Golden Boy. You know, that's that's one thing that you just never know. You never know. I don't even know. Uh, I mean, maybe you might know. Maybe some some shit might come out maybe an old video might surface you know we, maybe we might find out one day you know what 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 the real deal was you know but if just one of them things where you know if you like the dog because you know i didn't have nothing right off a of buck you know, I had some pretty tight buck shit, but, you know, it wasn't like right off of them. So you just kind of trusted the dogs that that your dogs came off. 
and just went from there. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Let me get this thing smaller on this side. Check out that. Uh, let me get this in here. I'm trying to get to get my split screen going so I won't cover up our our chat and stuff oh you want to you try to take that that off the screen <laughs> yeah oh you, you just just, uh, just just click on any uh comment just double click it oh you got another super chat now so you click when you click on this other super chat here when you re get ready to take it off just click it again and it'll go away Oh no! I, I'm trying to get the other screen so I can. Oh, I'm, try, I'm trying to look through Bucks. Uh, oh, the pedigree. Dang, but then it get too small. Okay. Yeah, screen share. Okay, let yeah. me see. Seth Calhoun. Uh, what work would the panel suggest for a bully to go back to some GameStop and showing high prey drive off GameStop? I think. I was thinking hog hunting. What would you, what would the panel suggest? What work would you, the panel suggest for a bully to go back to some game start, show some high praise? Uh, uh, the bully showing high praise. It depends on what kind of bully you got. Like if it's a one of the big XL bullies or something, if he in some type of shape, some type of working shape, then you probably be able to do something with him, but. If he wanted a little short stocky ones to look like bulldogs or something, I don't really know what you would do with him. Because I wouldn't put no hog. I wouldn't definitely wouldn't take him out there gonna get dusted off talking with a hog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I I just I just start with what I want, you know, instead of trying to create. There's a lot of people out here with dogs, man. And they pretty much then did most of the work. You know, I try to do things that way, too. And uh, you better off getting what you want, man, in my opinion. I mean, yeah. I, I don't really know what all goes into the bully. Uh, you know, what, what you know, what goes into making them? You know, what what are they made of? You know, just even five generate. Like, I haven't seen a, a, a long pedigree on them. You know, like, we can go back, like, on this buck dog. You know, we can go back and... I mean, he's already five, six generations in, in some people's pedigree today. So, or eight generations. So, like, I, I've never seen eight generations of bullies um, or whatever that, whatever makes them. So, I, you know, I don't, I wouldn't recommend it. You know, that, that's my answer. Yeah. I personally think it's a, I, I just don't understand the creation of the American bully. I'm not hating on the breed. But I've seen some that look beautiful. There's some beautiful American bullies out there. I just never understood the, the, what, the, what the point of the breed was. If you already have the American Pitbull Terrier, you have the American <coughs> Staff and Shark Terrier, you have uh, Staff Bull, which is a beautiful little dog. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then you got like French Bull dogs. You got all this stuff. And a lot of these bullies are starting to look like them dogs. Like, I don't understand what the purpose of the bully is, but I mean, I, I just don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I think it's just a, it's just a, just a show dog, pretty much. You know, that's that's all I think. But you know, they do got those bigger ones. That the XL ones. Yeah, they are pretty yeah, I like big. Them. Yeah, I like them. I like and they, they, they can be, you know, they got some real big ones too, you know. So, like I said, I, I don't know, you know, those dogs are so pretty, you know, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even risk uh, fucking one of those dogs up doing yeah. some hog hunting type stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't even do it either because they, it's, it's better, it's animals that are better suited for that job uh, than uh, why fuck up a bully that wasn't bred for that specifically. They, these dogs really, Bullies was really bred to take the game inside of them. That's what how I was told by this girl, this lady who uh she breed bullies. She was walking past my house one day. She had a beautiful 
a red, red nose, uh, uh, bully. You know what I'm saying? Big, wide motherfucker, shit low to the ground, look like a uh, Alonzo dog, really. Look like Alonzo dog for real. For real. You, know, you ever seen Alonzo dogs now? How they look? Yeah, yeah. They low. They like short. They've been so inbred. The motherfuckers look like bullies and shit. And um, that's how that one looked. That's how I thought it was. So I stopped and said, "Excuse me." Said, "That's Alonzo dog." And she said, oh, no, it's an American bully. I said, oh, okay. Ooh, so we got talking and shit. I swore it was a long dog, but she was like, no, nah, um, the American bully, blah, blah, blah. And she was telling me how they they was taking, they breed to remove the game that's from the dog. So, like, she said uh, they don't want the high prey drive and all that kind of stuff. Like, that's like a negative trait. That's what she said. I don't know if that's true or not for everybody, right. but that's what she said. So... I'm like, okay, you know, um, that's interesting, you know. So people, people moving, you know, you got different. It's so many different standards for American bully. You got the XL, you got the the classic, you got the extreme, you got the exotic. It's like what you know. My uncle got one. She's short, she's blue, big, wide in the motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? She real wide, and um, he trying to do something with her. She, she got that that hog uh, snout like she <laughs> she do all that when she walking and shit. You know she sounds like a pig or something. But that motherfucker wide as hell. She trying to have some puppies off her now. You know, but you know to each his own. I feel like if I was gonna go hog hunting or something, you want a dog that can run through them trees and stuff and be agile and nimble and shit. You know what I'm saying? You don't want a dog that's gonna be getting tired and breathing heavy or, or you know. My dog that can move, float, float, you know, flow through that motherfucking tree. That's what I would think you would want, you know what I mean? Right, right. Divine Justice 7 in the super chat. Appreciate that, fam. He says, show what? these kings some respect. Hit the like button. Y'all go ahead and hit that like button. We, uh, let me check it, man. So, I, you know, see where we at. See where we at. Oh, we got, uh. We got 54 likes. Let's let's get them likes up. Let's get them likes up. Uh, we got this buck pedigree up here. On the uh on the joint. Yeah, you click you click on that super chat again and it'll go away. Yeah, I can't pedigree. find that motherfucker. <laughs> oh, well, you, you click any any name. Uh, I got I got you. I got you. Oh yeah, click another name and then just okay. twice. Yes, sir. Anyway, we got we got Bucks Bucks pad up there. I mean, let's go through. Let's go through some of these. Is it showing up? Yep, it's showing up. Okay. Let's hit this. Uh, let's hit this Tiverton dog. Let's hit this Tiverton dog. You see, I'm a little, I'm a little behind on this other screen. Okay, so it's with yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. The YouTube screen gonna gonna be like five, ten seconds behind. Okay, so I gotta. So when I, so when I say it, I can't. No, no, they're oh. gonna hear you. They're gonna hear you exactly. YouTube is gonna be like a couple seconds behind uh, the, the actual live, but they're gonna be able to hear you on time on YouTube. Right, right. So is it gonna correspond with, yep, with the screen yep. changing too, though? Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Anyway, you, you you see this uh Tiverton dog, you know, he's a double bred buck dog. You know, he's got the the uh O Stevens Virgil stuff on the bottom, you know, the Homer blood, uh the Havana Boys Maggie blood on the bottom. Let's let's bust this down. Bust this down. So do I gotta wait for for it to click and then talk like right now? No, no, no. You can talk. You can talk. You can go. You can flow naturally. Okay, this shit's weird as hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got just this look like at it from seven seconds slower on my other joint. Yeah, look look at it from your uh, stream yard screen. Yeah, don't even worry about that, huh? Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about YouTube because it's, you're gonna it's gonna confuse you. But the people in the chat can see it regular regular speed on YouTube. Yeah, but if, if I want it full like this. I can't. Uh, oh, yeah, because you're talking about you want to see the head. How, okay. Yeah, I want it to be full like that. Because I, if I had it small, you could see the screen, stream yard screen, or it'll make it smaller. Well, actually, 
Yeah, then if I put the stream yard on top, I won't be able to see the pad. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> it's crazy, man. Anyway, uh, you know, we on it right now. Uh, you know, the La Passe's Buster stuff. You know, that's uh, Bully Son, Arts Missy. So so you got a lot of that Eli, Eli Jr. stuff in there, the Bully Son stuff, Midnight Cowboy, the Carver Stompanato, you know, uh, it's a lot of good things that they put in there. The Greenwood blood, you know, that's they're the Lonzo stuff right there. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that uh, snowball dog, you know, that's them as heavy Dibo dogs, you know, Kobe, Kobe dogs, you know, and then they cross that into the buck, into a buck and took a bitch off of that right back to buck to get tiverton you know tiverton was a really good dog you know he he also produced some good dogs in his right um there was one named jim that we had some matter of fact while we on here you know why don't i show one that i had uh jim this was uh this is his pedigree right here and he was a really good bred dog. Um, yeah, he bred up. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. We, we we used to get we used to get a lot of dogs coming off of this dog. You know, he was just back there. You know, just you know, uh, untouchable. They, you know, they had that dog. You know, <laughs> he should have cast, cast some uh, straws on him. Man, um, then they had uh, a son of him. That was this dog right here, Billy Ray. I mean, you see how tight yeah. Buck he is. And then we had we had stuff coming down off of off of this dog, you know. So the gym stuff, you know, we had it, fucked it off, ended up having to get it through this dog because he was basically one of the last living. Uh, kids off of Jim at that time, mm-hmm. you know, and then, uh, you see that's 357 litter littermate sister, uh, that Billy dog, you know, that Billy dog produced, you know, a whole bunch of good dogs, a whole right. bunch of good dogs, you know, a lot of stuff, like they say, it ain't even on here. You know, they had the, uh, they bred her to Hugo. Uh, I had one off a of slider and Billy, this, this female right here, I own this female right here. <laughs> I owe this bitch right here, man. You know what I'm saying? Just that tight, tight shit, you know. Mm-hmm. And she was a good dog. She was a good producing dog, you know. Uh, this was, I probably had her like in 2000 and 2002, 2001, 2002, maybe right. 03 at the, at the latest. You know, this, okay. uh, Real good stuff. So, I mean, you know, the Buck stuff, it definitely brought a lot to the table. You know, when you had it, you know, you knew you had it. And then we started figuring out, you know, we don't we don't really need it. Because I, when I actually got introduced to it, it, was, it wasn't it was heavy. I was getting the, the heavy Red Boy Jocko stuff, and we were putting, the you know, just a little bit of Buck in there. Right. And uh, we're rolling like that. You can't see none of them guys is up in the thing trying to get in, are they? Uh, I, I don't see nobody on my end. I don't know. You, you. I think you have to see them on your end. Let me, let me try to get this up here. Hold up. Okay, nah, ain't nobody in there. We just got the screen. I see, I see Eli in the comments, bro. Eli. Who, Eli? Yeah, Eli. Well, I ain't got his. Uh, we still ain't ain't got his thing. Ram was supposed to. Be up on it. Uh Ram Ram you see uh be up on it. Hope they had that there. Marie dog. This was a good one too. That uh rat lives Marie, you know, right off of Tiverton to the Gus stuff, you know, rat lives Gus. That's Cowboy's uh father. You know, we were just cooking on cooking on him, you know. And then you got the Saint Benedict stuff in there. I mean, you know. That's that's kind of how it was coming uh, through those sides. 
what I had, you know, access to. Um, let me look at. Uh, I think there was one. Hold up. Let me get out of here. Let me get up out of here. I think this is uh yeah, this is yellow buck right here. That's a different one though. This dog was a good producing dog, also. You know, right off of Buck and Sassy. Sassy is uh yellow's litter mate. So you just you can imagine the type of breedings that they were able to do you know back then when when buck was around you know this is like the the great grand champion yellows litter mate sister you know back to the to buck you know what i'm saying it's like right. that's like lebron and ad you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's on the, it's going in, down in, in, in the front court right there you know what i'm saying then you got other great producers you know behind it you know there's really no room for 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 extra you know, goofing off, you know, when you're looking I think at some, it. I think somebody's trying to get in, though. Let me see. I heard some noise. Uh, I don't see nobody. Oh, okay. My bad. I heard something. Yeah, that's, uh, that's from that side. Uh, Buster Brown was one that uh, Rams wanted me to, to pull up, and you can look at that. Um, but back back to the Boyle's boat action and the 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 Undertaker, you know all of that stuff, you know. Yeah, you know I was gonna ask. I want, man, I'm gonna ram to be here. I'm gonna ask y'all about that Buster Brown, cause uh, you know Buster Brown was the, was that dude, but I heard some rumors. I don't know if it was true or not. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know yeah. if I should even put it out there, but fuck it. Uh, I heard a rumor that uh. Cause you know a lot of stuff like this used to happen back in the day, but I'm not saying this actually happened with Buster Brown. It's just a rumor, but I heard that uh, I heard he quit. He quit doing his job one day, and uh, and uh, and, and you know they they covered it up or some shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how true that is. And they said that uh, man, I don't know y'all people who are familiar with it can tell me. I don't know if it's true, but you know there's a lot of rumors about these dogs. Well, I I definitely don't think that he got the shine that he should have got uh, being a dog right off a buck of, of that uh, supposedly caliber back in those days. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know how long he lived. You know, I, I don't know. You know much about all of that i saw you know he is in pedigrees you know there's there's some dogs with with him in there so you know there ain't no like discrepancy about that you know the dog was bred but maybe that maybe that could have something to do with it you know you never know i would love to hear uh you know the full panel you know weigh in on something like that Let me get in here, see what this chat's looking like. We got that pad up there. Oh, I can still, okay. Eli Zachary. He said, we get together. I got that. You should hit hit me on the thing so I can send you that, uh, that, uh, that link. I got the link ready. I just ain't just, you guys got to hit my line, my line on the, uh, on the website. I don't think I don't know if I got his uh oh okay you gonna hit you on the website okay let say I don't know if I got Eli uh email address that Eli Bolio let me see uh he said have you ever had a handicap rascal cross I have not. I have not uh, had that. Maybe if you send me a a uh, example, you know, I probably could. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I've ever seen it. I don't think so. He said, uh, "Anthony Ortiz, I was going through Buck's offspring 
and came across this. What you think? Uh, let me look at that. Came across what? He got the number right there. It's uh, it's everybody could look at it. That's the uh, okay. the ID. The ID on Pad Online is uh, two two six six one seven. I'm a, I'm gonna look that up real fast. Look at that real fast and see. See if something come up. What is that? Is that is that a female that was on there that he bred to or something? It must have popped up. Popped up the wrong thing on mine. Let me know. He said a one-time winner, a one-time male can be a better producer than a CH or a GRCH. Oh, yeah, production and uh, performance, you know. I mean, they go hand in hand, but a lot of times they don't. You know, some dogs, they just – and that was one of the topics, you know, good performers, um, bad producers. Mhm. Mm yeah. Uh. It it it, it they can it, you never know. Like you could have a dog that ain't never touched nothing. It ain't a one time nothing. Ain't nothing. But he can end up being a better producer than a dog that uh was champion or grand champion or whatever. It's just a, ma a matter of um uh who that dog is bred to, what's in his genetics, shit like that. You know who got the dog. You know what I'm saying? Really. Um, because just because the dog's a champion don't mean it actually uh, went into the best competition. It don't mean that. Uh, you know, it's a lot of circumstances. People be cheating and shit. It's a lot of different circumstances that could happen. You know what I mean? It's a lot of dogs out here that uh, some dogs were supposedly cold dogs or curs and shit, and they still threw out some shit. You know what I mean? You just don't know. Bulldog Ma in the, in the, in the, uh, on the panel. What's happening? What's happening? What up? What up? What up? Seven eight. Salute, two, two, two. Uh, John Kramer. Seven. Salute seven eight. Salute Buck City. Salute. Yes, sir. Good, what y'all? What y'all talking about? Are oh, we just cooking on Buck and you know just bulldog talk? Ain't ain't no real uh subject. I got the screen share going on and we just uh um just going through. Bucks offspring list and you know checking out some dogs that he got and some different stuff. I got Buster Brown on the screen right now. You got your you got your uh what you call it on your camera on. Yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. I might have to go off a little bit. Hold on. It should be a little button on the on the bottom. Ma, he's he's out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Bulldog Mall. Bulldog motherfucking mall. You know, he's he's ready for y'all, man. Okay, email me. Um Eli, you got uh just look on my uh hit up the buckcity.com and hit the uh oh, matter of fact, oh, oh okay, don't worry. Don't worry. I got you. Don't worry. I got you right now. If the if you sent the email. I should get that motherfucker right now. Let me get Bulldog Mall back in here. You up in there? Bulldog Mall. You might um, be on mute or something. Yo, okay. can y'all hear me? Yeah, we hear you now. Yeah, we, we hear you now, man. Let me get up out of wow. here. What y'all chalking it up about? Man, you just said that last time, man. <laughs> nah, <laughs> you talking about well, I was up. 
You talking about Buck Dogs, uh, uh, Grand Champion Buck, uh, Descendants, and what he produced and shit like that. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Y'all are, uh, y'all on that Buck stuff, huh? Abraham Bull, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you, that, know, you Abraham, got the athletes hey, that is Sweet Williams blood hey, in a, there. Hey, 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 Buck, I'm gonna send you some shit. Hey, man. I know some motherfuckers who got some Abraham Bull shit tight. Tight. tight huh? That's like, bro, and it's and it still look good. So I don't know if they're lying in them pairs or what, but them dogs still look good. Them motherfuckers tight and they look good. They still look like they they don't look all inbred and fucked up. You know what I'm saying? That Queen yeah. of Hearts and Buck shit, man, that shit, that shit look real good, bro. I'm that's thinking a I'm legit, like, that's a legit cross right there. Mm-hmm. I know a I know a guy who had got a, got the knew the guy Gino, um, and he got he had got his stuff. But I guess the guy Gino had passed away. But uh, he had a lot of the uh, Grand Champion, um, uh, that Queen of Hearts stuff right there. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Gino yeah, line. Gino, of, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, was, I was familiar with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, guy, he uh got it, but he and he passed it on. But Gino, he said Gino did real good with it, um, being the circumstances uh that he was in, because a lot of people don't know he's he was across the border and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I got uh, let me catch up here. Who's that? Yellow Buck. Let me let me catch up here. Yeah, that's Yellow Buck right there. Oh, picture. You don't see that stuff around. I remember in the late nineties, this was uh, wasn't the stuff. This is the stuff that's in the, over in the islands, right? Uh, well, I think I, I'm not sure exactly where uh, Stone City was. It could they could have been though. You know, what I I'm believe saying? this is. I believe uh, their stuff is in the islands, but uh, I haven't seen this in uh, a while, a long while. I wonder what happened to it. Anybody know what came out of this? You said what? What happened to the them um, dogs, them yellow bug dogs? Um, I see. What's up, Lala? I see you, sister. Look at sister Lala D in the building. I yes. seen a few of them. I seen a few uh dogs that got some yellow bucks in their on, on their pedigree. Uh, I gotta go dig through the crates now. Yellow know buck. I, uh, he, he wasn't bred as many times as uh, you know, a lot of them other dogs. You know what I'm saying? Bug dogs and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, he was one of the, you know, highly, highly underrated dog. You know, um, you know that destroyer dog was a good dog too, and produced a lot of good dogs. So that's that's where you're gonna really see it uh, mostly. Then the red buck, um, they got that red buck dog was a pretty good dog also but you know some of these dogs they just wasn't able to uh produce enough you know it's sad you know it's just the war on these dogs been going on though you know we all we all know that you know so interestingly enough uh we was talking about prune crosses this cross right here that yellow buck crosses would be technically the same combo as mayday but with different dogs yeah exactly a lot of people you know they were on that you know even may you know may they they weren't the first people to to do that mm-hmm. that cross no right there you know what i'm saying no. it, you know everybody's seeing seeing what's going on seeing what's working everybody it's a wave a wave comes through and uh you know some people get uh some people eat off of that wave and some people don't you know. Do you think people pr- uh, protect their pedigrees because of that right there? Um, what do you what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, um, you know, you know, people jumping on the wagon. I mean, you know, I guess we did talk about this a couple of days ago, but you know, most of these dogs, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, man, most of these dogs that we that we talk about, like Buck and a lot of dogs we talk about, mm-hmm. um. They, a lot of them were commercialized. I, I wouldn't say Yellow Buck, for instance, but a lot of the dogs, you know, they were they were commercialized. So I I don't think people were trying to hide the the recipes and shit like you know Barracuda and stuff. 
Now they that's where the um the deception comes in, you know, when people are actually adding things to the to the pedigree that that really aren't there, you know. Well, I wasn't meaning I was um I was saying on more or less uh you know purposeful not to hide from basically people knowing your recipes what you cooking up your dish you know if you're cooking up a a a, a, a dish you're gonna have a seat you know what i'm saying so that's why that's where i was referring to not people trying to do it a deception and you know go sell to put like a maurice carver way but i was saying you know if you did being this cross right here an example right here you know it's been done a few times with a few people uh with a few other dogs and it's been successful a lot of people protect their uh uh their recipes because of this uh this was just uh, of conversation neither here nor there but you know yeah yeah mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of people do that you know you know they protect their recipes and stuff salute everybody you know that that get that get down like that that don't want nobody to know you know what they got um, let me ask, let me ask y'all you, you know, something though. It's like uh, like what the brother Bulldog Mall just brought up about the uh, about the uh, what was one of y'all brought it up about how that breeding was done before. Leave me alone, boy. Call me. That breeding was done before with the whole uh, Red Boy Jocko to the to the bolio shit from buck and that's why i was talking about in the beginning like do you what what pedigree do you believe with buck because if you believe the pedigree that uh 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 he from gold from from golden boy and he got tombstone bolio if you believe the other pedigree then he he a bolio dog and you know mayday dogs got that red boy jacko Bolio in that look in that touch of tombstone. How relevant is tombstone, or do you think tombstone is, is like kind of overrated in this whole process? Oh, you want to answer first, but or you you want me to shoot? Oh, go ahead, shoot. Uh, I think me personally, tombstone is very much relevant in the dogs, uh, especially when you look at the dogs. What they were trying to do when when you what they were trying to do uh in the past when they were breeding off them dival type of dogs that's what if you look at uh tombstone's pedigree and so i think when he, they did do the little cross of because whichever way you look at it in the pedigree of buck tombstone is somewhat gonna be there and a lot of people don't don't they don't think they, they'll look at a pedigree so say for instance we're looking at buck's pedigree right now People think that Bolio on the top fourth uh, generation right there, that don't mean anything. That's going to be powerful. And I always uh, say why it does. If you if you have a, a gallon of water, right, and it's sitting there, <laughs> <laughs> it's sitting there. But 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 if I if I drop a, a one drop of shit, a iota of shit up in there, that shit in water, you gonna know it's it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, <laughs> right. so tombstone, uh, tombstone matters. He's gonna be very important up in that mix. I mean, if we looked at that as a dog scenario, that German Shepherd from around the corner, even though you push it out, that motherfucker show his head. And and in, yeah. in the form of tombstone dogs, it's just Patrick got us by the leg. And my theory why he probably did did that as his Maurice his Carver is, I think, um, uh, 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 Buck City kind of. Uh, he had kind of touched on it one time when he was talking about the source. You know, people will get the dog and they'll be like, oh, okay, I got this bad dog. But, you know, Baker Davis had um, the dogs for sale over there. You know what I'm saying? And Maurice Carver threw that old gypsy twist. They're like, yeah, if you want the real one, <laughs> come see me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're not going to let nobody run over your business. So that right there, it, do I think Tombstone and Buck, Buck, I really can't answer that right there because I do know it's uh, blended in whether it's 35 to 65 you know what i'm saying you know uh i i just believe but now if, i guess if i had to guess i would go on logic and he sold that dog to a doctor you know Rams ain't backstage. Or, 
he sold that dog to a doctor and uh i don't see why he would lie to that man at that point and then i don't believe that he would uh foreseeing that dog going to some, some other hand oh shit. <laughs> we got the whole panel back here man <laughs> Hey, Who G in the, in the super chat? Uh, characteristics of a good bug dog today. Salute everybody. Hey, I, uh, hey let me. I'm gonna respond to what uh, Bulldog Ma said real quick. I agree with you, bro. That's why I brought that up about Tombstone because I, I think the reason I asked the question: Do y'all think Tombstone overrated? Because people be telling me that shit every time I bring up. Whenever I say Red Boy Jacko Bolio Tombstone, niggas be like, "Man, just say Red Boy Jacko Bolio." I'm like, why? Mm -hmm. Man, Tombstone ain't really do shit. So I'm like, how? Oh, how you figure? God. I'm like, how you figure Tombstone ain't do shit? Man, Tombstone overrated. Tombstone just, I'm like, whatever, nigga. I, Tombstone I, 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 game is a motherfucker, though. Right. How he overrated? I don't know. It's goofy, Ram, what up? What up, bro? Fucking left my yo, phone in the street, man. I had to go all the way back up there. Oh, okay. Yo, what's going on, y'all? What's going on? Try to what's cook up? with y'all a little minute. Oh, man, what up, what up man? What hey, up, what's Tom? going on, man? Getting dragged out here in these streets, man. It's real out here. <laughs> well, yeah. Everybody weigh in, or a couple people weigh in on uh, characteristics of a good buck dog today. Well, I'll start off by saying, the, uh, you know, the confirmation. The motherfuckers got damn near perfect confirmation, you know, and I'm a big believer in uh, functioning form, you know. Uh, yeah. Fucking game than a motherfucker like Buck was. But I think today's dog's a little bit, got a little bit more heavier punch than Buck had, you know, which is supposed to happen if you evolve in the right way. You feel me? And them Buck dogs, they still got, you know, uh, good tough skin, a lot of finish, you know, just all around good, well-bred dogs, man, when you get them from the right people. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just a uh, confirmationally sound animal um you know you talking about a good one you know i think they probably be smart you know probably be a not your dumbest animal although you probably could get some dumb ones depending on uh you know who you get them off and then uh just beautiful man you know they they look almost too beautiful to be true you know you'd be like damn you know that dog is real pretty you know what i'm saying so they make these weird ass screams too uh well <laughs> the ones i seen uh make these i seen a, a heavy bread buck dog one time uh back in the day when i went hunting and uh he was out there hunting too and uh i want to see you know what this little dog of mine could do i heard this buck dog do a scream i ain't never gonna forget and uh i said nope i think i made a mistake let's leave this motherfucker said, that's a uh, fucking Apache war cry or something. I'm like, what the fuck is that? What the fuck they doing? This motherfucker couldn't wait to get loose on the hog. I said, okay, this motherfucker hit crazy. Insanity. Yeah, but they, uh, that's a good dog. So. I'm like, like a motherfucker stepped on his tail or something, huh? Yeah, that, that motherfucker was, he was mad at, at, at his handler. He was trying to go oh, get loose. Yeah. Like, man, don't be holding me. Let me loose, mother. Ah! Like, what the fuck is that? Imagine, uh, being, imagine being in the woods and hearing a motherfucker uh, uh, scream. You don't know what the fuck, what the fuck it is. Man, fuck that. You go uh, think that's the Rougarou <laughs> werewolf on your right, head. That's what motherfuckers come up with them Bigfoot stories and shit. Seth Calhoun in the super chat. To the panel. Who was a better match dog? Grand champion Molly B or Queen of Hearts? And why wasn't Molly B bred more? I, I can't speak on none of that because I, I, I ain't involved in none yeah. of that. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, no uh, imaginary, no imaginary dog. Yeah, I, yeah, no, yeah, no I, you know. Dog. Yeah, we it's, don't know, man. These it, dogs, I, I heard they're both good dogs though. Uh, imaginary yeah. player. They're, they're both historical. Uh why mm -hmm. dogs don't get bred enough, you know, it could be something simple like uh you know the size of yard or you know what i'm saying things like that or you know maybe you know I, I know some yards that are uh male dominant yards you know they just got a whole bunch of males and they don't do a whole bunch of breedings i i, I talk to dog men that they don't want to keep no females around at all they they just 
I, I, I seen dog men with 20 males, no females, mm -hmm. you know, straight yeah, I, up. Man. You know what I'm saying? See, Ram know me. I, I just, I need one good male, maybe two. And I, I, I keep bitches around me, man. Yeah, exactly. You know? So. Yeah, that's what I do. But a lot of times, like, my fucking males don't get bred a lot, though, still. You know? Mm -hmm. I don't right. be on a bunch of puppies. So that could be one reason, too. Yeah. And I don't just be fucking with everybody to have my shit. Because, you know, I don't sell dogs. You know? Yeah. Well, I get rid of them. Yeah. 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 Yeah, everybody ain't in a rush to pick no. up puppy shit. Everybody ain't in a rush to pick up puppy shit. That's a lot yeah. of shit, bro. Yeah, so yeah, it is. Bro, All that yeah. fucking trust me. That's why it's they, good eat, they eat a lot too because they want them be hogging. You got to feed them more just to you know. Yeah, you got to eat a lot unless you get eight different bowls and shit. You know what I'm saying? Who's doing that? You know, yeah. it's so, time yeah. it's a very time consuming, very time consuming. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it, it, it takes it takes away from the, the work that you want to put in with your your up and coming dogs, you know what I mean? When you got puppies, man, everything starts going in slow motion. Right. Yeah, that's why it's good to have kids and shit and, and raise them up. To, to Yo, you like say he backstage, Buck. Let him in. My yeah, bad. Eli, Eli been in there. Eli been in there. Oh, Oh, all right. What's what up, Yes, sir. Oh, What's going on? Yeah, you can't I think see him the on the same yard as, 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 as uh, <laughs> Red Boy at one point in time, so she probably got overshadowed. And then, if I recall right, she was stolen too. Because it was Molly B and. Uh, what up, Eli? Yeah, What's somebody just said What's Molly B was stolen. Yeah, I think she got stolen, man. And she was on the same yard with Grand Chapo, my, uh, uh, her, and uh, Red Boy. So I think she kind of, you know, you can't breed everything. Uh, yeah, she got stole, so. yeah. Salute to you, my brother. Thanks for the super chat. Friday night with Buck City. Saturday night. Saturday night with Buck City. You know what it is. Let's get it going. Let's smash on that like button. Smash that like button. Let's get this stream out here. You did call in, call in. I got the joint right there. You know what I'm saying? Call in. If you disagree with anything or, or you know, you just want to say what's up. You did. You know how we do. Let's keep it going. We was just talking yeah. about that, man. You look at them papers and you be messing around, man. You got dogs four or five years old before you blink and you ain't do nothing. No brains or nothing with them, man. That time fly. Especially when you get a yard that's high, that's high percentage and consistent, it's like who do you breed? One come and hit, you breed them, and then like Ram say, I'm one of them people. I get a breed maybe every two or three years. You can literally see my generation because it was like that's all I bred. So everybody else just got old because I didn't want yeah. everybody to have it. The few people that got it, they got it from. Me. Yeah, I'm in the same boat as you, cuz. And puppies, man, it's so much work, man. It's so much work. People don't really understand. People always could just say why it wasn't bred and why this wasn't bred. Not much work. And then you got to keep them dogs and raise them dogs and see. Yeah. And hopefully everybody could keep their dog alive so you can really see how them dogs was turning yeah. out, man. It takes a lot of work, man. That'd be the part right there because that shit makes you mad. You be do, do a breeding and all you got is four puppies. And if you let one or two of those go, and then all of a sudden, them two gone, they did. And it's like, God damn. Like, hey. I did that. I'd rather die on me than it die on somebody else. Exactly. Let me, let me, let me ask you a question uh, to the breeders. Like, when you let your males, uh, when, when y'all breed, are y'all satisfied with one, with one stick? Or do you do two sticks for backup or whatever? Or, uh, and also, have y'all ever ran across a male that was that was too aggressive to even fuck with a, a broad and heat? Oh, I want to know that from y'all, from like Thompson and Buck and, you know, who breathed. I, well, I, go ahead, Eli, kill it. I, I myself, I had a male that was, that, was, that was like that, and I just put a muzzle on him, and she'd say, when you're a dog, man, you got to do what you got to do to help him out, you know? So when you get a male like that, every once in a while, they going to mount in dominance anyway. You got to help them out and, and, get them, and get them stuck, you know. But on the sticks, I know that sperm, that semen is, is viable for uh, up to seven days. 
So if I can get me one stick, I'm cool. It don't bother me now. But I, if somebody want two, I used to breed two times uh, 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 all the time. That every other day shit, I used to do that shit too. With an older male, you'll probably be better off doing that because an older male they might not have the same spring account as a younger. But if you can just meet one stick, shit. If I stick you on the ninth day, or stick if uh, on the tenth day, ninth to the eleventh day. If I stick you in, shit, I'm pretty much thinking all the rest of the days like you ovulate is viable semen in in the bitch already. That's my thoughts. Okay. Yeah, I do. I'm a seven. I'm seven days off, seven days on. So once I get to seven days, once I start counting from, I see heavy spotting. Then I'm doing breedings for the next seven days, and I'm skipping a day in between each breeding. I like to get three in, at least three in, and I move like that. But far super aggressive males breeding and stuff. Most of most of my males, they don't have a problem. It be the bitches, man. It be them damn bitches, bro. They be yeah. doing three three sixties in the stand and all type of shit. Cause a male, difficult males, you could kind of coax them. Some males is is funny when you when you breed them, but for the most part, with me, uh, I get a lot of issues out of bitches. So uh, I be stand up most of the time. Cause the minute the poor touch they back, it's berserk mode. They don't care. They'll be snarling and flagging at the same fucking time, man. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, type, man. Yeah. Bitches try to breathe because you know a male just let a motherfucking bitch just jump all over him if he thinks some pussy is in the motherfucking future. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't that some fu- ain't that some funny shit though, man? Because I didn't see the male get hit while trying to mount a bitch. It don't matter, man. They when they they know oh, what yeah. that is. Oh yeah, they know what that's that's how it is. Savagery. All men do that. You know what I'm saying? When you when you King Kong getting this shit, you know, just like your wife, she mad at you. Move, move! You are you are all night. You like, girl, shut up. Come here, come here, girl. You don't get no fuck about all that shit. Now, when it went, now after you bust your nut, that's when your senses come in. You know what I'm saying? That's when you like, oh, okay, I ain't got to put up with this dumb shit. And that's how I'm like oh, fucking stupid ass bitch getting on my nerves. <laughs> right, right. After after you bust that nut, that's when motherfuckers start thinking like, okay, you, you, you got a pocket here. Treat O'Neal. Yeah, because I seen the motherfucking uh, dog one time. Uh, I had this one girl named Coco. She was some heavy climbing and stuff. And um, I had her over there with one of my partners. He had some Eli stuff he was breathing too. And um, this fucking boy went nuts. Like, he would get in there. And then this motherfucker was like, start acting a fool like a little weirdo. Like, once he get, well, after he busts his nut, he don't want to be locked in there anymore. He started ah! I'm, like, crying and running, trying to pull her and shit. She crying. I'm like, man, so we had to hold this motherfucker. He just on some weirdo shit. Like he he didn't want to be in the pussy no more. Yeah, like some of them do crazy shit. I think the AI kits are, are handy for those stupid ass dogs, those male dogs that you know they too aggressive or they wanna, you know, they don't want to breed and shit. You know, of course you got to learn how to do that. Um, you know, it's yeah, not the easiest different- thing. That's a different party though with a male that don't want to breed, man. That's a whole different. You, you damn near gotta have the AI kit because you can't just pull that off on the fly unless you yeah. some bad motherfucker with some Vaseline or some shit. Uh, you're gonna have, to, have to help him out. So yeah, that's you yeah. have to have that AI. You gonna have that like like what say? You have to have that AI. You just you, you, AI is ass. He, he don't even see no female. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no female around. All he do is smell a rag with the with the bitch's scent on it. You know what I'm saying? You don't even put the bitch around them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. At That's all. Cool. And cool. a lot of times when you're breeding males that are crazy like that, if you have a chain set up or, or let's say you got two kennels that, you know, they kind of close, you know, if they're not going to chew on the cage, of course, you don't want to fuck up no hardware, but put them on two chains kind of close to each other. You know, the females coming in, a lot of time males and females, they could be extra aggressive toward dogs that they never saw before. You know what I'm saying? Versus when she's getting ready, she get the flag and at the end of the fucking chain, you you look back there, her ass is sticking it over there and shit. You know what I'm saying? And then boom, you know, a lot of times it's a lot easier like that. Patience and, you know, all that, you know, goes along with it. But, uh, nah, you know, just a few tips, you know, yeah, but I heard that a lot though, man. Um, about breeding the males on the chain, like introducing the bitch to their spot, 
instead of taking them off the chain. Because once you take them off the chain, they think they're going to work. Uh, you know what I mean? It changes right, right. the whole mode. Right. Changes the whole mode of shit when right. you breed them in their own little area that they've been in. Right. The idea, my idea is to have the male in his spot and to back the female in there. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't never let her walk in that chain spot head first. You always back her in. That sure. way she can't see him and then he could just smell it and you could find out what he want to do. You know, he want to put his paw up there or he want to bite her. You know what I'm saying? That's you kind of uh weigh it out like that but you know it shouldn't be a threat you know what i'm saying um if you it sometimes it is it sometimes it always is but some I funny found, shit though or i don't mean to interrupt you but some funny shit though watch that when you bagging them up on that chain because every once in a while you get one of them they stick their dick in the chain right 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 exactly exactly so you, you gotta know, make sure like to do is, uh, you i like have to that take, have that up i like my bad but I like to take an empty kennel and, you know, let the male, you know, mark it up, then bring the female in there. When I take the male out, let her mark it up and bring the male back in and just do that a couple of oh, times yeah. and kind yeah. of get used to the smell of each other. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, sometimes problem arise, but I say about eight out of ten times that shit work, you know. And then uh, as far as sticking them go, I like to do mine three days in a row, you know, so. Uh, that first day stick, you know, that's getting all that old fucking semen out. And then he's going to, you know, produce some fresh sperm the next day. And then, you know, so on and so forth. That's why I like to do it like that. But, you know, there ain't no bad or wrong way to do it, you know. Breathe I would say you know, if you do skip a day, don't skip too many days because you might could do, say, like, you'll stick them today and then try to stick them on Sunday, you know, in a the pups might could be too far apart, you know, like that first stick might have took and then that last one might have took too. You know, they about four days yeah. apart and they developed yeah. me. Have you're, a hundred, you're a hundred on that too. You're a hundred on that. I want to know the exact number because I think Eli said seven, but somebody told me like three days that's that sperm still alive. I'd love to know the exact yeah. number. On it's, like, it's, it's like five. five. It's like five. Yeah. Five is about average. It's three to seven days. Seven days is like that max. That's but why see, uh, but day nine, a lot day. of people, uh, you know, like with these days and stuff, you know, now my my understanding and, and my book that, I, you know, the 14th day is the day, you know, a lot of people think it's the 10th day. A lot of people, eighth, ninth day, you know, the most important day when, when those eggs drop is the 14th day. I agree. You know, that's that's just me, you know. So only thing that's important to me is 11 through about 15, 16 days. That's it. Why you heard me you know. say that. I agree. I can't um, wait. I'll address it on the 11th day to see if the blood's uh, thinning out and uh, the flagging. You know, like, let's say I saw her. Let's say today I saw her. Now you got to give it 48 hours, give or take, you know with that shit because you probably didn't see it the day before so we'll we'll address it in 10 days from that day you know that that's gonna make it the 10th 11th day 12th day and then you analyze her from there for all the symptoms and everything depending if she's a heavy bleeder or you know whatever and if she's flagging a lot of times you know they'll swell up and then the swelling will go down just a little bit you know, like when they're at peak swelling, that's not that's not the time to stick them. You know what I'm saying? So it 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 gets tricky with it. I've seen a lot of people um, miss a lot of breedings, and uh, you know, three's good. But if you if you if you had the bitch on your yard, you know her heat cycles are regular, and you know that you check her every day. You know wh exactly when she came in. I think two two good sticks is is plenty. Two good sticks is plenty. Then I say it depends if you want a bunch of dogs too. You know, sometimes I just might you know stick them once and hope for the best. You know, and a lot of the times I might just get you know two or three pups, which is cool for me because I'm keeping them all. Might give one to the homie. But other than that, you know, I could deal with three pups as opposed to fucking 10. 
Bro, I had 14 one time. I didn't know what the fuck I was going to do. Man, bro, I had a whole <laughs> Timmy bitch, bro, to some Frisco shit. The bitch had 19 puppies, man. <laughs> I was like, God damn, you know, a lot more, like six of them didn't make it, but still, that leave me 13. <laughs> yeah, I'm Shit. telling you, I had a bitch that every time she didn't throw nothing less than 11, I bred her three times, she threw 11, 13, and 14. And she threw 14 puppies with a 14 year old uh, male that Rodriguez t- tab, uh, Snooty Mill, I showed you, uh, Ram. She threw 14 fucking puppies with him. I was like, oh my God. And then the bitch had mass types and then everything died. Damn. That's why I learned the trick about the mass size. That homo yeah. is going through the roof, cuz. That, that's 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 a bitch throwing some 14, 15. God dang. But I mean like that Man, shit. That's a fucking every family's dream right there, boy. <laughs> I'll be happy with four or five, man. Them boys does. You don't get a bunch of puppies off of them motherfuckers, man. You get about four or five. Which is perfect for me, man. I like small letters, man. Yeah. It's, it's less of a fucking headache. And you get you get more time to really see who's who, you know? Seven, eight yeah. motherfuckers, that's a lot of personalities in there. You know what? My Coca-Cola dogs, they didn't throw a lot of dogs out either like that. And I always was able to keep all of them motherfuckers, too. You know? Like, no more than fucking five. <laughs> hey, Book. Yes, yeah, sir. Pull up that... uh. Reading up some potent lady, uh, such a new. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me look. Andy Dandy. Yeah, bona fide. Nineteen of the motherfuckers, man. I was like, God damn! Then she had them in the summer. And now here it be hot as fuck, so I had to have them motherfuckers inside damn near all summer. That shit was a fucking zoo. I had mine, and I always had my puppies inside. But you seen, like y'all seen on the video, how I had that, I had this big ass like crate that's built up, and I had a piece of wood that I could slide underneath it, and I I layered newspaper to where you can just roll one layer, uh, one or two layers back, and roll everything up and go. And shit, that shit just, it kept everything clean, kept everything going. If I came in there and something was in there, roll the newspaper up, take it out, and get it and get it gone. And shit, she was in the room. She was in, in a back room by herself. And shit, she Hell shit. yeah. I give y'all a little, uh, little tip, too, that I be using for my pups. And, uh, you know, I got a little platforms and shit like that for them, too. You know, to walk around on and shit and shit fall down underneath and all that good shit. But underneath that, I like to use cat litter because it's going to just catch all residual shit and urine. And it's going to clump it up. So, you know, y'all right. put that in y'all motherfucking uh, repertoire for the next set of pups. You know, cat litter helps. And, you know, it's going to keep the Giardia and Coccidia down because it's drying the shit out as soon as it makes contact with it. Yep. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a high box kind of dude. Uh, I mess with the high boxes. I, I I don't know what it is, but since well, I started, they, they since everybody I started knows impl- what the hot box is, bro. You know. Yeah, they they implicate. I don't know. I implicated that as a tool to what I had going on, and with that hot box, man, I had way less stress. No, but I'm saying for people who don't know what is a hot box. Oh, it's pretty much a bo- it's a hot box. It's a box that's high off the ground. It's a, <laughs> You uh, what you call? Yeah, you, know, you got you got the you, you got a, you got like a front comment section and all that. So I figured, yeah, you know, you can build you can build the shit for under three hundred and seventy five dollars. You get eleven deck boards, one sheet of hard plywood because the plywood is only for the doghouse in the back. Get yourself a roll of chicken wire. I like to use the really small chicken wire so they can't they the dog can't like snag on it. You use the ones that's more spaced out. They could pull on it. I use that real fine chicken wire and I wrap it around the front of it. And I got my little front door in the front. I got my little side door in the back. It's about four feet, four, yeah, maybe four feet, three and a half feet off the ground. Everything can drain through. You know what I mean? It's a nice environment. I can mount my heat lamp and everything in there. And I ain't got to move the bitch because that's when I was like, I was, when I first started messing with them dogs, I was getting situations where you moving them and they not settled and they not comfortable. You know what I mean? That hot box, I could put them in there five days before the drop date. 
and they could get comfortable, acclimated. And when she's ready to have her puppies, I could just come through and assist. You know what I mean? I ain't moving her or changing the environment or none of that stuff. So I, I fuck with the hot boxes. You just, y'all, you just look at, y'all can look at the videos and see see how it's built. I think I did a video. I don't know which one, but I kind of took pictures as I was building it. So you can kind of see it's really nothing to it. Yeah, I'm uh, I, how I was big is that. How big is your box? Uh, the uh, it's a you know. it's a I use eleven. What is it? Ten foot long pressure treated deck boards pre cut, and that's the length of it pretty much. So you got maybe six foot, seven foot in the front where they can go around in the doghouse. I don't have the big big doghouse. I like it where it's enough, not too big where puppies could get too scattered, but it's just enough room. So you're talking about the doghouse part. Is the remainder after the six, so you know, three and a half feet, four feet is the width of the doghouse that I build on the back. Gotcha. And everything sits, everything sits on the deck boards. You know what I mean? It ain't the doghouse that's hanging off the back type deal. Ten feet so, long. That's that's nice though. That's nice. Yeah, for one bitch, and you know, I don't get dogs dropping no ten, thirteen. I get five, four puppies. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's com- it's comfortable. So it worked out for me. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You, you ever tried that uh that uh horse panel? That thick horse panel, two by four grade. I seen it. I haven't used it yet, but I seen it. But I was they fucking can't with get their head through that. The pups can't get through that. Yeah, that chicken wire. I ain't have the issues with the chicken wire. When the chicken wire fail, I'm gonna go to the horse panels. But that chicken right. wire, uh, it's it's it's. I don't even know if I'm using the correct term for it, but it's it's a mesh material, but it's really small squares. Like the squares yeah. are maybe a quarter of an inch wide, and I frame it in where it's pulled so tight, you know what I mean? And I never really had a dog, they'll mess with the wood in there before they try to like mess with the chicken wire. So right. if it if it fell, I'll go to the panels because I kind of that's what the same type of panels um Tom was using to build his um pens, isn't it? Isn't I'm, it? That I'm same? not sure if it was the uh it could have been, could have been, but yeah, I, I couldn't find none that big. You know, I I made uh some boxes I went and bought. Uh, one of the panels and, you know, use some bolt cutters and chopped it down how I, how I want it, you know, and use the, the horseshoe nails to bang that shit in, you know what I'm saying? That shit's strong, man. It, it'll hold a, a fucking dog, for sure. Or, I think I seen the machine to attract the supply pre- cut like that 10 foot long. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I use that shit mayhem. You know, that paste is real good. You just kind of be Gotta be careful with it because you could fuck around and give them too much of that wormer, you know. I'm fucking shit. Yeah, just a real, real little amount of that for sure. Like 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 they say, a pea size, you want to use like a half a pea size with that for like uh young dogs. Yeah, sir. You you know, you don't want to tear up like a last result. Yo. I'm I can ask I'm asking a question real quick. Uh uh I had got sidetracked, forgot, but in line to the last question about the, the, the sticking, have y'all ever had a male and a female that was cool that I'm talking about game dog that y'all could leave together in the breeding situation unattended to ever in life? Hell no. Okay. You know, no, I had dogs that was cool with each other, you know, wouldn't fucking do shit while I was looking, but I would never leave them hoes unattended, man. You just never know. These yeah. motherfuckers get the hoo banging on each other out of nowhere for no fucking reason, you know? Shit had, turned to prison right real fast. I knew a dude who, uh, he raised his dogs. He had two. He had a, a boy and a girl from two different litters, but there was about maybe a month apart. And they was raised together as puppies. And he, his, you know, he on some ghetto shit. He put them motherfuckers in the motherfucking uh together. He just let their ass together. Let the motherfuckers grow up together. You know, he only time he would feed them, he would feed them separately. Other than that, he left them motherfuckers in the room together. And uh, he hit them motherfuckers in there. Ah, all that shit. He let them go. Come in. He let them go and all that kind of stuff. But uh, every time the motherfuckers bred up. He was always getting out like 10 puppies out that motherfucker. Always. So they had to be in there sticking heavy. You know what I'm saying? I was, that's why I was wondering, had y'all ever seen that before? Had y'all ever uh, seen anybody just let these dogs be together and shit like that? Not with no, this. I, 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 
I never see, I never seen it, but not seen it, but I never I can't do that. But I've seen situations where people have been able to raise them dogs together and get away with a little bit more. But it's like I'm saying, one day when they wake the fuck up and feel like they don't like the other motherfucker and they pop off, it's horrific, bro. Exactly. It's horrific. Yeah, it ain't, it ain't worth it. <laughs> it's not worth the, you know, you just put his ass up. Like, cause I, I fuck it. I'll be thinking about that shit. I'll be like, man, I should have put the motherfucker up. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it's not I mean, worth it. Uh, Y'all ever use diatomaceous earth for wormer? Like, uh, I use it to keep the worms down after I worm a dog. You know? Yeah, nice. I good. use that just as a maintenance, you know, and you can put it on their coat and they food around their area and all that just to help keep the parasites down. But just for a wormer exclusively, no, don't use that because it's a natural ingredient. So it's going to take longer to deworm them. And, you know, by that time, you fuck around, lose your dogs to worms. Yeah, yeah, so you know, don't, 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 like after you worm them, you know, to help keep the worms down away in that bay, but don't just use that exclusively just for that, at least for not puppies, you know. The motherfuckers get wormy right. and motherfuckers die hella quick on you when they get too wormy. Seth Calhoun in the soup, uh, in the super chat. Uh, how many chances does the panel give new blood on their yard before y'all say it's not click clicking with your blood? I'm quick with shit. Uh, <laughs> I, ain't gonna, I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I yo, if it ain't clicking, and I don't like that dog's personality, you know what I mean. I'm not fucking doing it. Like it costs money and time to raise and, and breed dogs, and if you even begin to think that this shit ain't gonna work, don't fucking do it, man. I mean, unless you got just time and money to be kicking out on experiments, you know what I mean. If, like I don't, if a dog don't click with what I got going on, I don't force the issue. I just know, like, hey, I'm, I'm, I was around people that you had to be impressed with a dog to breed it. You know what I mean? Like you, you had to like that shit. And you needed to see qualities and traits in that shit. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't give them too long, especially if it's something not from my camp. You know what I mean? And I, I know I wasn't impressed with it, and then I get it on the yard, and I don't see it moving like how i wanted to move i'm not pressed to implicate it in my program so that's just my that's just me i ain't got time to waste i don't know how that the rest of the panel feels well in a perfect world for me say if i like i get a mail from one of the homies you know and i got three bitches that's you know coming in the heat pretty close to each other i'm gonna just breed that mail to all three just so i can see the results while they all growing up and you know by the time they all three years old you know i could see you know if it's working or not but yeah, but uh, I'm short with it too, you know. I don't like to introduce a lot of new blood into my shit, you know, be, just because the, the slightest shit you can fuck your whole program up. So I'll be quick with that shit too, man. I like to, uh, I, I just because I breed to you, it's just like these, these hoes out here. <laughs> just because we fuck, don't mean you're my girl. <laughs> so I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you could do a breeding and, and try something. You know, if you got a nice um, crew of people, you know, that, that you share dogs with, you know, shoot shoot him a couple, shoot him a couple, you know what I'm saying? See how they turn out uh, and see how they're coming up. But I, I mean, I guess if those don't work, you know, and you bred them to some good stuff that, you know, is normally working, you you know, you feel like. You know, it's going to be hard to breed that dog again, you know. So, I mean, you might want to get a, maybe a couple breedings with him, you know, because it's it's just hard to breed stuff that you don't like. So, um, yeah, it's you, it's got to show me it's clicking. You know, I'm, I'm not going to say it's not. I'm going to just not talk about it at all, you know, because it's not going to be in there for, for no time flat. For me, I'm I'm like uh everybody else. I I when I bred, I bred. I had two sisters. I bred them three different ways. First two times I bred them, shit looked like fucking magic. When I bred their mama, that shit looked like magic. Everything was clicking. I I knew what to expect when I seen my shit. When I did this one fucking breeding, that was the worst fucking breeding I ever did. I took a chance and I bred a cold and I bred a cold 
couple dogs in there. Man, them puppies ain't act nothing like my shit. And then, like, they look like it, but they, they didn't act like it. And as they got older, it just, they was not what that was. And for me, that was my life. You know what? Fuck this. I'm done with this. I like, I, I'm not going to bad mouth that blood or nothing like that. But that particular breeding was not a breed that I wanted to do anymore. So, that's the idea for me. I'm, I'm uh, Once I stick you, I'm done because I know I got good percentages when, when I breed my stuff. So I'm not going to mess it up. Putting something together that I see already not working. I don't have percentages like that. I pulled up that Chipotle breeding too. It's up on the day. Yeah, that, that, that meal right there, the meal in my shot, uh, right there in my avatar that's how he breathed and it, i just posted a video today we were laughing uh back in the day he said he said i love you on the video and we were laughing about the shit and i found the video i posted but somebody was asking how was he bred that's how he played right there the red champion little book uh six times buckets with that Tiverton stuff you were talking about earlier big bone exactly that's nice right there i like that big bone slick dog Big That's big real, bones. real, real tight right there, man. Real tight. Yeah. It don't get no tighter than that right there. You know, yeah. that's that's good stuff right you there. You still got a line on that stuff, bro? Uh, uh, it's some still around, but I, it's some still around, but I ain't I got, I got, I got, I got a dog. I got a motherfucker 10, 11 years old uh, at my uncle's right now, but it's only a quarter of this shit. You know, I got I got like the cowboy shit in there. I got the ramrod tramp in there. I got the the Conway shit, the uh triple A saber shit. Um, and then it's got the quarter of the buck in there. That's like the last of the Tiverton, you know. But the bitch that uh is coming down off is real, real nice, man. Matter of fact, I'll show you. I'm gonna show you uh what dog I'm talking about. Actually, that yeah, we still got around this motherfucker ten right years now. old. Hey, Let me see, Ram, that was gonna be like my Eli Maloney yeah. boss right there because of the tombstone. I'm one of the people that believe Buck is heavy a tombstone uh, uh, phenotype. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm one of those people. So I, 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 use, I was gonna use that for my Maloney. Album. Plus, when they did it to Maggie with the uh, book to Eli stuff. Book always seemed to do good, uh, throw good dog when he was bred cross fed Eli stuff, like that old old TV stuff, and, 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 and that's it. Hell yeah, and that's you know another proven cross, you know, Eli Bolio. No matter this if you get right the boys or wherever, oh. you know, you can put that's, them dogs together right now and get good results if you got two good dogs. And hey, we got some bill. We got this motherfucker right here. He 11 years old. 11 years old. And I'm going to show you the, uh, I'm going to click on this bad eye, bitch. This was my bitch. And uh, did, look how tight bread that bitch is. You know, like it was, it was ridiculous. You know how tight bread she was. Let me get this out of there. Touchable blue. Yeah, that bitch was bred up, nigga. So, tight. How did so she ever do that on the bottom of that bonnie? Let me, let great, me see that out. great. Oh, that bonnie? Yeah, let me see that out. Yeah, yeah, that's that uh, Metlin's Outlaw and all that. You know what that's I'm saying? Let me kick. Oh, hold up. I'm, let me click on this. Hold up. Um, yeah. That's, uh, man, that's, that's bred great. Yeah. Is it, up, is it up there yet? There we go. Yeah, there. there we go. Okay. I'll throw the sass and stuff. Yeah. And uh now that was my bitch. Her name was Bad Eye. She had a bad eye. That's why we named her that, <laughs> you know. And uh man, she was bred great. And so we took it to the to the cowboy shit, you know, the with the uh this dog is still around. You know, I don't know. I was thinking about pulling pulling some of that shit out. Good dogs too, you know. 
Man, pull that shit out, bro. That shit ain't out right now. You know, that's some throwback shit. Yeah, nah, nobody nobody really got that right there. Some people do. Some people do. They do. Some people do. That's nice with that old, uh, all that old uh, wild well, side uh, be like a People always talk about B-Line Cowboy because of all the fake accolades and all of that stuff. But shit, from everything that I done heard, everything I know, I'm going to do. Yeah, hell yeah. Yo, Eli, you, you, you faded out, bro. If you were still talking, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I was just saying that, but you won't come in on the B-Line Cowboy. All right. Uh, we're all more No phone problem. But uh Ma out of there. But mm -hmm. uh, he he couldn't play that, with us. That Patrick Umbro was strong, boy. Yeah, now nah, that dogs, man. One thing about it, you didn't need a lot of buck in there. You didn't. You know, you only need a little bit of buck. And and you you could tell like that shit, that Timberton shit, you know. You, you you could tell if you had one of those dogs for sure. They they were like a broken record, man. They're damn near the same kind of shit every time. And you, and you just love it. Hey, yeah. Eli, you familiar with uh the uh big old champion Maurice, one of the brothers in the chat, he was asking about it. It's the booze and bark shady lady stuff. You know, you're a resident uh shady lady expert, so I run that by you. Yeah, Moji asked. Salute, bro. I have to look up that pedigree, but I'm familiar with big O's uh, that he had those dogs. He had that Boots and Bark Shelly Lady cross, and he had it also crossed with some of that uh, old Carver blood, too. I believe he had some of the old uh, uh, Ramirez Richard uh, stuff, and he had some of the old uh, e my blood that he had he had crossed with it. Had some that nice dogs, good. but it just, it just depend on, let me, hey, Pull that oh, good yeah, shit right I just there. want to make sure it's the right big O because it's two big O's. It's big O that had the boot from Shady Lady stuff with Oreo, and he was more of a breeder and uh uh on that end. And then it's big O that was the old school dog man that had the car around boots and bark stuff. So it depends on which big O it was. I'm not I'm not familiar with that champion Maurice though. Yeah. <laughs> oh man yeah this is a booze and bark dog let me pull them up yeah here booze and bark dog oh okay now that shit right there i would love because that's the shit off my uh off my oh geez the great that's something that was that breeding i was looking for those looking for those hounds at one point in time but I could never find them. That's what I wanted to actually breed the G's in myself when I was when I was finding all the ones that uh that the champions and stuff that I was looking for to breed to. Yeah, I would have definitely bred to that. If you can get get hold of that right there and do a breeding with them, I damn sure would. Just Pig TV in the silver chat. He said, Eli, drop us an easier raw feed around chicken leg quarters. Leg quarters. Yeah. Shit, the one Eli got is pretty easy right there. You know that he posted that video. It don't get, you know, easier than that. <laughs> yeah, other than taking the chicken out the pack, rinsing it off, and just throwing it in the dog bowl. Yeah, because if you dumb it down anymore, you talking about an easier one, you talking about really you not putting the right amount of nutrition in your bowl. You start to see your dogs really stag off. They ain't got what they need. They don't have what they need. Yeah, it start looking yeah, ass get to a little bit sluggish. Cold, you know, cold so beef dry ass like and hair be standing up and shit. Uh, it don't get no easier than that, my boy. Facts. I think, I think he, probably, he probably got a couple more dogs, though. Like I said, if you if you got a small yard, yeah. If you, if you got a big yard, that's a lot. If you got a, <laughs> yeah, if you got a big <laughs> yard, you know. When I had a big yard, I would just... When I go buy my food every two weeks, the day I bought it, I just prepare everything right then and there. That's what I did. 
That's what I did, bro. And then if it, if if it's a problem because you got a bigger yard like that, then you can. It's it's nothing wrong with you mixing raw and kibble. And that way you still get your uh, uh still get all your nutrition in there. You put just a little bit of kibble in there to get to get uh nutrition and carbs and and, and stuff that you need. You put you a little bit of uh red cell in there. Put you. I heard people, I heard I heard people. I mean, cut you off a lot, but I heard a lot of people say they dog get stomach. I never had that experience, but have y'all ever had that? Like y'all dogs get an upset stomach by mixing raw and in, in, in kibble? No, and I don't have no, a problem with it. it. I do it right now myself, raw and kibble with an egg. Uh, actually, the stools are a lot harder from the bone, so I think that's the uh, best, the best feed. Actually, just a, a combination of the two, in my opinion. Damn, Ma, you just came out of nowhere, cuz. <laughs> oh, <my bad. laughs> Who the fuck is that? <laughs> Got you, bitch. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. No, I apologize. I had a my 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 daughter and stuff. I got her so. Yeah. Oh yeah. Shit, family first, bro. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Sal sal salute to the fathers. Salute to the fathers out there. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. All yes, sir. To all the fathers. All the fathers in the chat. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hats off to y'all, gentlemen. You know, raise them kids up right, man. The bulldog way. Yeah. And hey, y'all was talking about um that G that Boosenbark dog. Yeah. Oh yeah. What well, what was y'all? What was the discussion on it? If I oh, apologize I for jumping in and oh you good, man. You good. There, yeah. there you go, right there. He up there. Yeah, he posted a son of G a, a G's and I was telling him if he can get a hold of that, go ahead, because that was something that I was looking for. I, I wanted to breed G's in myself, you know, but I had so much shit going at that time. It was Jeezy or another or uh, our, our grand champion. I had access to the grand champion. I, I no, but mm. both of them was producers, but I, I wouldn't mind bringing the uh, uh, the G's in myself. So he got a son that's a good performer that's, that, that look like a very well built dog. And I would, uh -huh. kind of yeah. I I just want to say shout out to you know saying to the, even just looking at this pad because you know you know these dogs. I remember a long time ago in the nineties when I used to have you know I'm sure all of us get on the phone and stuff and get to calling dog men. And to see this pair is put together like this, this motherfucker uh, had stood the test of time right here. You know what I'm saying? Because this this blood right here at that pair, that Maurice dog, I, I that dog has been in that the spider bite him. You guys, you know what I'm saying? That stuff is that family's been put together. Uh, shit for damn near. I would you guys say thirty years? It's good to see it still together in the in the in the, in the right hands also. You know, I, that's all I got right there. Uh -huh. I got, got all of this stuff right here with Champion Larry Jr. and uh, bring it back to the Shady Bill stuff. Somebody yeah. background echoing. Yeah, somebody TV on. Oh, that's mine. Hold on. Somebody got the echo. Echo. Oh. But yeah, Ma, that, that, that's my shit right there. That's the shit that I started with. with uh, dogs bred like this, and that's the shit I still have. I just got it blended my way with some uh, boomerang out, like we were talking about before, with the uh, mm -hmm. whistle out and, and, and uh, shady field stuff. So yeah, that's my type of shit right there. Oh yeah, I, I look at there that 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 gator. I seen a few uh, dogs right off of uh, that gator dog, and uh, man, them were them were some good, really good dogs. Uh, uh, and then that with that spider bite them, we had the uh some of the stuff up here, but via that uh I know people probably don't the he that poison orca dog, you know, I, I could go into a discussion in itself, but that said it was uh, the, of the same stuff. So them dogs are, you know, um highly and listen, not, that pedigree on that dog is incredible. People didn't allow you just got to get it off the right stuff. I, I'm not going to bash nobody's dog. But I, I only like these. That, that stuff right there, I'll take it off of that. You know? Yeah. I'll take it off of that. Take it off of that. Mm, boost and bark. You know? But some of it, I won't take it. I won't, I won't take it off. But, you know, if you see it heavily pedal and moved around, those are the ones that I won't take nothing off of. You see it when you got to go talk to a man 
and get to know them and try to get it from them, or you got to know somebody that knows somebody to get it from them. Those are ones mm-hmm. that I pretty much lean towards, you know. Yes, the sir. Ones that peddled, I, I was I would not chase those because if some of them that have bad hair, they really fall off, you know. They 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 real fiery and they look like the real they look like the real deal and everything. They got good good looks, but. They just don't stay around. They just, they just, the test of time, they just don't pass. Understood. Book, where you go? You back? Oh, I was on mute. I was on mute. My bad. Nah, well, I'm here. What's going on? Man, I like, I, we was talking about that dog, but hey, I liked it that, that, uh, book and stuff, that, till, that tillage and stuff. But I just did not get a chance to really incorporate it into my, into my program because it was like I had some kids next door and they used to throw shit over the fucking gate all the time. And that fucking dog got a blockage and ended up dying. dying. I traded that dog for one of the, for one that was bred like what you was just looking at on on that Maurice dog. I had one that I had bred up that was close to that, and I traded him for him. That dog was supposed to be sold for thirty five hundred dollars. And they said, fuck that. We'll take the trade on your pup. And they took the trade on my fucking pup, old Greasy, that did. And I was like, fuck, I lost the goddamn dog because shit, kids throwing shit over the fence. Suitors for life, dog training in the super chat. Appreciate that, fam. Yeah, that shit heartbreaking when they eat something. I mean, goddamn, that's heartbreaking, man. And I, yeah, you know, I. You- keep it clean and you make sure you're doing everything and you can't really get mad at no i mean this was a little baby like a little three-year-old four-year-old toddler the mama them just wasn't paying attention he just throwing shit over the fence he thinking he playing i with lost the dog. The, i lost the mr k dog like that i don't know if you guys are familiar with the old mr k stuff, uh, stuff. real yeah yeah it was straight from the old man uh himself and uh man i don't know what the hell that dog ate but it it ate something and it got like bloat and um man i lost the dog man but and and this was the last because i think oh mr k uh hey buck can you put a pet up there is he there i don't, big I don't, put a, I don't know you big put a pet up there at- <laughs> no 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 i was showing well i mean you what's the number what's, the, what's a lot of people number? don't know uh no, just look up uh Mr. K's Buck B U P. Is this is this is uh I mean we're talking bulldog, so uh this is not a dog that I have per se, but this would give uh the audience, you know, a whereabout because the carver blood, the carver blood went so many What's different ways. But this What's his name? uh but Mr. K M R and then K and then B U P Buck. B U P damn, that's a crazy name. He must have didn't want hey, nobody with that name. Man, it's some old stuff. It was our, oh, remember that female I had? It was all down from them. This is an old dog, man, y'all. That uh, Mr. K's. Old... Yeah. Right off of uh, Stabonato. Yeah. Yep. 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 His this stuff came from straight from Carver. Uh, he don't. He was real popular back in the eighties and um, the seventies and stuff. Uh, he doesn't get much recognition of him. He he's a um he bred real tight too. But a lot of old dog men know him, you know what I'm saying, or know who he was. You know, I've showed some old dog men how the dogs put together, and they were actually uh thoroughly surprised uh they hadn't seen the blood in a long time. Man, I love that like blood it. right now. <laughs> that well, motherfucker. Well, that's just one of it. A tight bread. You should know of it, Ram. He was right down your way. Yeah, my oh, buddy yeah. had Cali. Yep. Huh? Yeah, I know. That's why I said I wish I had some of this shit right now. You know, motherfucker. You see that shit when you want to come up, and you know you got doing your own thing, so you just mm. bypass the shit. But now, you know, mm. fast forward 10, 15 years later, you like, God damn, I should have got that shit when I had the chance, because now it ain't around. Yeah, he had a uh, dog name. Uh, I'd have put that in the headlock, car. Huh? <laughs> well, I last, long, last bit of it. 
I lost the last bit of it to what Eli was talking about just recently or within the last couple of years. Man, your shit static is so bad. <laughs> your oh, shit can, is can static e, man. Hey. Can, you, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Can I you think somebody uh, y'all gotta put your y'all gotta turn that mic off when somebody talking. Mina, let me sit over or, here. You know, Ma gotta get rid of that Obama phone. That'll help too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bulldog kid in the super chat. Salute, brothers. Buck City, what effect do you feel the Mayday Dragon Lady breeding had on the Mayday line? Uh well, you know, it definitely made it a little different, you know, because everything else basically was made a bread out to something else, you know. So that being a brother and sister, you know, it probably tightened up the genetics a little bit and, you know, made dogs that, um, I mean, it made a pretty good production thing yeah i think it made good catalyst dogs like when yeah. you look at like baby doll, that's a perfect example of a good catalyst dog you know you could breed her a lot of different ways and get you know a lot of different but equally good results right she's got that definitely i well i don't you know i ain't talked to the people that did it but it, it appears to me that they locked in the right traits you know a lot of times it doesn't really matter uh what you're breeding you know it's but if if you're locking in the right the right shit you know what i'm saying just like even before people had pedigrees you know they knew you know that they wanted to breed to this badass dog you know what i'm saying they they knew that you know what i'm saying before people it's just obvious you know you know when you're breeding animals you want to breed the the best specimens you know you know, and 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 their parents, hopefully, if they're still around, you know. When I came to the dogs, these dogs right here, the Mayday uh Dragon Lady and the Mayday Blondie dogs, and that with the STP with that uh black pad stuff was all that everybody was talking about. That's all I was trying to I was like, damn, I gotta get some of that. I gotta get some of that. You know, but it was just at that point in time those dogs kind of faded away. Because it was so high dollar that it was so in demand that a lot of people just started buying them just to sell them and just to just breed them and just to sell them. So that's what happened. Now you can, now you find like uh I think that was uh you and Ma were talking about earlier. A lot of those dogs went back to the islands uh, and had gotten better, but they haven't let them out like they like they used to. Right, right. Samai so Warren, what was the better carver line percentage wise? What's the best? What's the better? What's the better carver line? I, Without getting, I don't too, think you, know, I, the you, day carver, I say you, you carver. I let you carver guys answer that. I say that Thibodeau blood. You know all that shit they made banjo. You know that's as most recent as I would go with it because it's still cashews and the stuff. You know I ain't trying to blow their spot up. But yeah, I would yeah. say that uh, the I Thibodeau mean, blood. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's 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 a. Go ahead, Mark. Give me, give me two minutes. You guys cook. Oh, give me two I, seconds. I I I uh, I mean the the Thibodeau stuff. Uh, I mean when I look, I don't think there's really no best. You know, what I'm saying you know, obviously, uh, uh, the, it, I guess it's more of a preference that I would say. You know, uh, my preference is more the uh, the the boomerang carver type of stuff. But I do. Uh, like the uh, uh, the 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 Thibodeau stuff because it carries that uh, Ed Crenshaw snow stuff. But I've seen a lot of the hide sack stuff. Uh, we had uh, the I don't know if ever, anybody ever remember this dog named Winky. That uh, stuff was up uh, around this way, and then I know of a, a guy who still has it, which is heavy sack stuff. And they all got their attributes, and they all had their faults. Me personally, I I think that you should slam them back together. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, you get a well-balanced dog that way. So uh, That's again, funny. You I, that. That. I got one bread just like that coming, you know, down from Winky. 
that's funny. Yeah, yeah, I know where you got it from. Me, I, I, that's they're beautiful looking animals. Yeah, you cross with that red boy mm -hmm. in there too. Yeah, yeah, with that boy. Yeah, yeah, them some good dogs right mm -hmm. there. You know, get them from the right people. And Winky blood hard to find too, though. You know, you gotta know motherfuckers who got it and cats who got it really ain't trying to come off it like that. Bring him late. They started yeah, bringing my, him late. Yeah, my homeboy owned Winky. Mm -hmm. So he mm -hmm. he had a, he went to a few hands, uh, uh, yeah. but he um you know there was um, a lot of people. Ended up with I kind of, <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who somebody who had him and. And uh, um, I, I kind of followed them dogs because uh, 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 Winky and it was a it was a it was a, a, a real uh, small family of them. Uh, they were larger though, you know what I'm saying. They had their attributes, uh, you know. What I'm saying I would say if I could look at them as a, a dog, they were like Mike Tyson. Generally, that's how I perceive Carver dogs anyway. You know what I'm saying. You know I wouldn't, you know, you know the build them and everything. You know what I'm saying. But uh, yeah, the uh, that's but again. Uh, again, that's just preference because you got the Thibodeau stuff and then you got uh, like that Stompinato stuff. Also, I don't know if anybody heard of W.C. Laceville, his old old man, his old man breeder of the uh, Carver stuff. Yeah, then you got like LG stuff too, you know, which is down uh, right to the That's stuff, a form of uh, Carver. Exactly. Well, not necessarily. So well, well, I mean, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so what you I knew, say, Eli? I didn't hear you. Oh, I was, I was like, Carver is so wide, wide of a range to cover. You can go from LG to uh, uh the Winky stuff to the Lacefield stuff to the Kilmer stuff. To you know, I like the Kilmer, I, like the shit out of I, I even off. consider Bolio a Carver dog, even I though that's bread that's put that little combination, huh? I, that, that's why I was saying that's a wide range when you say Carver, because Carver, as a man himself, has such a great impact on the dogs. When you say, anytime somebody says they want to build Carver, you need to find that person that's putting it out. You have certain Ar Arlino dogs that I would love to have from certain people. You have certain Kilmer dogs that I would learn, love to have from certain people. It's just the person that breeds the dog and sets that standard. Is where that percentage comes from. And I myself on here couldn't just say, oh yeah, go to this person, go to that person, go to this person. You know. Mm -hmm. That's that's a diverse bloodline, man. It's behind a lot of the stuff, man. You see his name. I just I just wonder about the, the stories that were said about, you know, the puppies and you know what I mean? How much of an influence did that really play in it or did it play in it at all? You know, it's always stories behind this shit. By him swapping the litters and just letting the litter run together like like uh, Garner do. Yeah, they got video of it. You know what I mean? That's the it's an old video of it of all the puppies in the he, pen. I think I think that's a known fact that he he paper hung. He whatever you said you wanted, that's the recipe he told you you got. Yep. Yep. I I uh, had a homeboy. He did that, but how he distinguished them the litter? He put the uh, red collar. One had a blue collar. So I, I seen a, a cat with man. He had to have man about thirty puppies <laughs> in a kit in in a, in a pen. It looked like little rats, but he had them all um, identified by little the little collars. Not saying that um, Carver did that. I know some people who do it and they uh, put toenail polish on on, on their uh, you know on the dog puppies. There's ways to do it, but with Carver, I think in my opinion, I think that. Uh, he crammed them up in there and slung, you know, he was selling them dogs and, you know, uh, and if it, if it do any good, he'll, he'll hang a paper on himself. He don't even know how to damn dog with bread. You know what I'm saying? He knows it's a good mm -hmm. dog. Yeah. At that point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's why, you know, Maurice don't get a lot of slack for doing that because, uh, he get, he put out a lot of good dogs, you know, you get the slack come in when you're trying to breed them dogs you don't know if they really bred like that but as far as performance wise go you know you had a better chance of getting a good dog from him than you would anywhere else back well, in this time you know? I think that's the also, same reason also why you have to like that now. 
You think also, what? you have to define what a, what a carver dog is, and what I, what I consider a carver dog is a, a black widow dival dog. So if you look at all the usual suspect and uh and of carver's dogs, you're gonna see that female a black widow, and you're always gonna see the combination of a rascal via pistol or a, a dival. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know it was said that Maurice, uh, out of the dogs that he had on his yard, it was like 15, 20. Now he did have dogs because I know a man who knew both of them, him and Ed Crenshaw. You know what I'm saying? So I get some of my information from a guy, a dog man that's still around, uh, a dog man of color also. Salute to him. I ain't gonna say his name, but you know, now Maurice would have some dogs on his yard, like Snow and all them right there. So I think what people probably didn't complain about <laughs> if, if you know he got 20 some dogs on his go potty, baby. All right, I'll be there. I apologize. But the thing is, is when he, if he had 20 dogs on his yard, you know, he had uh, uh, Judy, he had uh, her sister. So with them 20 dogs, uh, it was litter mates and stuff. So they were all the same family. And I believe that's why people kind of allowed him to do him. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, you know, they really didn't trip because, you know, it came from off there. And else, if it did came from outside of the yard, uh, it may have came from something, but if you notice, everybody always concentrated on their own stuff. Uh, uh, Ronnie Hyde, how he did his dogs, and there, there you have in them strains right there. And each one of the strains, like the Ronnie Hyde dogs, they're a little different from the boomerang and so forth. But yeah, and you know what, my favorite Carver dogs were, man, that, that I always wanted one off of. I have a little touch of it, but I wanted like just a red one, like. Like the old T boy boomerang stuff, or or, or the old uh, uh, some Cooper old stuff, but that fucking Ronnie Duhon, just the way he bred, and like I read that story or uh, the the story on him, and the way though his his start going into it, his percentages, that's the type of thing that I look at when I look at a dog you know, and a dog. Like when you look what? at right now, what Garn is doing, I think the reason why he's getting away with doing what he's doing. So much now, it's a lot more people are getting better dogs from him because he's going back and buying the best dogs he made from him and putting them back into the breed program. I know the Ronnie Duhon blood firsthand myself. I've been have been around it for a while. Uh, good solid. Uh, uh, they're not versatile dogs, but good solid bulldogs. You know, good forward. You know, if you like a. Like a like a truck, you know what I'm saying? They're built like a truck. When you go take them to a confirmation show, uh, they're uh the, the judges are, are, are wild by them, you know. So, and they're still alive around where you can tell what what that they uh you can call them out too. You can see that they're one, they're still around. Yep. I I wanted it for more of the durability and the bone by structure. I had my dogs who were naturally smarter and stuff, and I felt like I can Cut it off by just using it at a quarter of a gallon, but I ended up getting it bred up like that anyway. So it kind of helped and came too. But that's like you said, that that's the type of dog that they were. But just that bone density and strength on them, and just that mentality, you know, just a, a, a high percentage clean line. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're like you said, a, a lot of bone. But you know, I think most Carver dogs and even them typical dogs, don't you think? Random typical dogs is pretty heavy bone. I they are where they were. I don't know how they are. I haven't seen one in a while. But uh, yeah, they they're pretty they, heavy bone. Yeah, they still, yeah, they still got good sound structure to them. You know, maybe not as big as they used to be as far as height and length go, but they still, you know, got that that old bulldog phenotype bone look to them. Yeah, I mean, let, me, let me bust a couple of these super chats real quick. Students for life dog training in the super chat. He said he wants to breed to a 14-year-old male. Any advice? Man, make sure you got your bitch, you know, as healthy as possible because that's an old male right there. And if you can, you know, make sure whoever owned the male is, uh, you know, keeping them nice and healthy, you know. And shit, if you can, fucking, I say get some sperm up or something for him or that shit Buck was talking about before. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's, humans can take it too. You know, it's a natural testosterone booster. But that's a good breeding to do, though. You know, that's a lot of old blood, especially if that dog was bred off of older dogs. You know, that dog could possibly 
be, you know, 20 years back. <laughs> I just uh, probably just asked, you know, when was the last litter that he's had, you know, simple questions like that. Or if he's been um, collected anytime soon, you know, they know like the levels and stuff of, of the last collection, you know, just give you a little um, feedback about it, you know. Is he going to a stud dog? Is he going to a stud dog, or is he using his own stud? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm that question. He's just asking the breed to a 14 year old dog. I mean, I guess if he was going to a stud dog, like you said, Buck, uh, I think they should. If they had the dog up for a stud, they should know the sperm count. It seemed like that would be a responsible thing if you got your dog up for stud. But he should ask right. that right, right there if they wouldn't got him. Yeah. Just because a person uh, got a nice pet, a bred dog, a nice bred dog, and then you see that old pet, that don't. A lot of people, the gypsy twist comes in where a person will. You see an old bred dog, and the dog ain't producing. He got a son that's producing. He'll send you a picture with your dog stuck to that dog, but go stick the next day. Go stick his uh, uh, hit the son to him. So you gotta be uh, wary of that when you deal him with the uh, that that stud service, the frozen semen. Uh, you know, I think I told a, a horror story about some frozen semen, uh, you know, but uh, so hopefully if he's going to breed to a 14 year old male, if it's his, he fit, goes through everything before he gives a man some money. Yeah, I'm, I'm 100 percent with Maul on that. You better do your research on that to the extent that I don't breed off my yard. But if I was going to stud to somebody, you, you, you got to do all your research on that before you run out there. I'd have something written up in contract as well. You know what I mean? Because you're rolling the dice and God only knows how you how much money you're paying for that. I've seen dudes, uh, you know, want you to be the guinea pig a lot. You know, it's like yeah. they don't even know if their dog could even have pups. Like, you, you, you're you not a stud if you never had pups before in my eyes. You know what I'm saying? Because like how are you you could be sterile like is a sterile dog a stud you know what i'm saying so you gotta you definitely want to make sure you know that the dog has at least had um, impregnated a dog before you know if the mom she didn't take care of him you know that's on her but you know if you can see some proof with your own eyes that's that's advice i give you yeah, we anybody else about to chime in on that we was talking about that last time. Well, how's how's it a brood, bitch? If she don't take care of puppies, same thing work for a male. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. Hell yeah. True. Uh, what's this? Uh, the bulldog kid. Speak about the punk triple A, Tance Herman, Red Boy Jocko stuff, and the best thing to cross in the Gaston Buck, Red Boy Jocko stuff. Uh, that's complete. Right there. Yeah, yeah. Was a big fan of the tent stuff. I like the uh, probably Tans Dudley the most, and that was just because of the stuff they was bringing it to up in Northern Cali. You know, they was getting real good quality animals crossing it with they stuff. But I never been a big fan of tent stuff. You know, it's it's too fifty fifty for me. Like I like my red boy Jocko to lean more towards the Jocko side of the game. You know, ain't nothing wrong with being, you know, 50-50 hybrid vigor, yada, 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 all that good shit. But, you know, I just like what I like. I like my real boy Jocko dogs more on the Jocko shit. And I never saw that with Tance dogs, even though I never seen a whole lot of them, you know. But the ones I did see, I didn't like them that much. What I did see as far as Tance was Travis stuff that I like. You know, I like that Tance Travis stuff. But as far as just the heavy Tance Triple uh, A uh, punk dogs and all that stuff that was free. I do that shit turned me off when it, when I first came the first first came the dog. A dude had drove all the way to North Carolina and went got one of these dogs and got back and it was so spooky and it was so mud looking and bush uh, bushy tail that it took off it, it took off running and ran down the fucking street and I was like, did he sell him a dog out the bound or something? Like I just didn't I just didn't understand. Like, damn, this dog just didn't look like a bulldog, was fucking bushy tailed and just I I got turned off by that. 
So I didn't, I was like, nah, the, the tennis dogs for me, not those heavy grade dogs that came from, that, that, that came from directly from him, but the Travis stuff that was, that was down here in Texas. Yeah. I like that shit. Yeah, I'm 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 on the boat by myself. I, I fucks with the tense blood. I like it with a punch of the termite. I like it put a, put together like that. But I, I believe I've seen enough of them where I could say they could stand on their own. It, it depends where you get them from. I, I still I still got access to tent dogs with the heavy bone structure, the 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 powerhouse version. You know what I mean? So a lot of them dogs got lightly bone lightly bred. The durability was gone real quick when certain people started putting it together certain kind of ways. But I, I fucks with the tents, but I like it with a punch of the termite. That's how I put it together on my yard. And you think you get more of the Jocko qualities when you put that termite in there? Yeah, they they those are two different dogs, man. The Red Bull, yeah. like that. People put it together like that's a cross because those dogs are entirely different to me. You know what I mean? Like. Personality wise, structure wise, they put together totally different. That, that Jocko stuff, the equation of it can change. You know what I mean? Because really, when you look at everybody who's running it, they just had different equations of it. You feel what I'm saying? Some people it was more to the Red Boy side, some people it was more to the Jocko. But if you can see a distinct difference in dogs, that lets you know how potent of a cross that was. But people just get real familiar just to say Red Boy Jocko. But you know what I mean? It's a collaboration. Yeah, real shit. Hello. Say yeah, that again, bro. You use more the hot dog uh, termite cross. Yeah, uh, Buck did a video on my termite bitch. I got a I got a pure termite bitch over here, and I I run it to I run it to the heavy tens triple A stuff. I like the I like termite the stuff. triple A stuff. Yeah, my dog, my dog ain't the triple A. I mean, ain't the uh, termite. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, he's, ta no, he's no, talking no. about the collaboration. I, you remember, I did the Nilo, I did the Nilo to Silly, and I did Hawk to Silly, and I did the three way to Silly. So I got the Cruz, the Burns. It, it's all in one. I, I put it together like three different ways. That's it. That Silly dog is bred incredible. I didn't even know I that think, even existed. I've been gone around blood. it for years. That uh, punk triple A stuff. Uh, Matter of fact, I, I have a grandson of Punk. Uh, it was off that Yellow Jack dog. You know that was that was good blood, but it, you gotta know gotta know what you're looking at. You know what I'm saying? You gotta know what you're looking at. You know, sometimes it could be just like one of your little homies that just like to talk shit, or you know, you know, you still him. You know what I'm saying? He might not be the the best thing since sliced bread, but you know, he can, he can be a key thing that you could be missing one day. You know what I'm saying? So now nah, those dogs, they serve their purpose. I think, you know, just the way they were bred and, you know, if people knew, you know, like even like today, like people know so much different knowledge about how to breed them. You know, I think it's, I think durability is the durability gets lost so quick. You know, y'all talking when we was talking about bone structure and strengthness or hide and things of that nature, that gets lost so quick, man. But if Hell you still yeah. can get the if you can get the renditions of it that's still durable, that, that's that's where it's at. Yup, because you can fuck off the durability in just one breeding, you know, get a litter of fucking good ones that just tear apart real easy, man. I always bring that up because I'm big on that, you know, just remembering the dogs from back in the day. Them motherfuckers could run through a rose bush and come out brand new, you know. Now, these new ones buy a kitten and you got to fucking suture and staple them back up. It's serious. Yeah, it's, it's not it's not something that people look for in them breeds, man. And like you said, it don't take one. It only take one breed to fuck it off. You know what I mean? It, it's so quick to lose it. it it's, 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 it's overnight, man. You can just lose bone structure and durability in one fucking breed, man. I know uh, Bert Soros. Stood dog. And I stood uh, uh, Bert. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, my bad. My bad, bro. Go ahead. I was just saying that bone and durability, 
It's something that I really look for and stood dog. When I for some reason when I get stuff like when I look for traits like that, when I grab it from a stud dog, it seems to stick. Yeah, yeah, that's what. Yeah, that, that, um, that's why I said you got to be impressed. People throw that word "stud" around loosely, man. A stud dog supposed to be an impressive fucking hound. It ain't supposed to be some. You know what I mean? You supposed to be looking at this dog to bring exactly what Eli said. Some serious treats to the party, man. Hey, how, how important do you guys think the stud is versus the uh, the female? Well, I or think they I, both I, 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 I believe because you know, I might want to yeah. bring my badass bitch to your badass male or vice versa. So to me, that's equally important. You know, it ain't shit to fucking uh you know take your good bitch and breed it to a good male and you nine times out of ten gonna get a good litter. You know, you got a good producing bitch already. You know, you breed her to subpar males and get good dogs. Imagine what you get when you breed her to a good stud dog. You know, so I would say both in that aspect, even though I lean more towards the bitches when I, on my yard, you know, because I like the bitches better. It's just for the production value, a good producing bitch is important to me. But they both, you know, in my eyes, equally important. It, I think it depends on, uh, you know, what you're trying to do. Because they, they could be equally important. Now, if you're like a guy that, ain't really going to get that stud out there, you know what I'm saying? Then a bitch might be more valuable to you. You know what I'm saying? Because she's good. Either one you could start a dynasty off of. If you got a good stud or a good female, you can start a dynasty off of both of them. But if it's just a stud and you're not uh like if you don't, let's say you only got one dog or two dogs or something, you know what I'm saying? And you're not really breeding them to, to his potential. Then, I mean, I guess you might lean toward the female might be more valuable to you. You know what I'm saying? If you're only going to have one dog, you know what I'm saying? So I think they're both equal, but it just depends on your situation, you know? Yeah. If uh, I, if I, don't I, was, pull, I don't I mean, go ahead, Mo. Oh no, I was I was saying I I always chased the uh the the males, you know what I'm saying, and uh you know for like for years, but the value of a good female, you know, so that I you know I I've, I actually I'm leaning towards if I would like to start up again, have to start over or whatever, you know, what would I start with as a good male or a good female? Um, I I, I would start with a, a good female. You know, but that was all I was saying. Yeah, I'm 50, 50, I'm 50, 50. Like Ram said, I, I believe they both, they both need to be. What's the word I'm looking for? Specimens. You know what I mean? They should both. I, I don't slack on either side. I want a good, solid male and I want a good, solid bitch. Because I've seen like really good males bred to subpar bitches and produce good dogs. And, you know, we're talking about males that are like true stud dogs that replicate themselves when they breed. So I've seen it, but then I've seen those same dogs bred to high caliber females and throw phenomenal dogs. You know what I mean? It's a, it's, you can see a fucking difference when you put certain stuff together with subpar dogs and exceptional dogs. So, you know, I, I would say, man, if you got a choice, try to get the best of both worlds, get a solid male and a solid bitch. What you got on there, Eli? My bad, I had jumped in the chat real fast. No, I mean, I, I agree with you. I'm like you, like I, both matter to me because I want something from, from each one of them. I'm not just sticking a breeding together just to stick it, stick it together. So the male just, just as important to me. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, a lot of people say that as far as from the look of, outlook of, that breeding program, like Buck was saying, a lot of people, if you're not going to stick your mail out there, if you just going to keep your program to, to a, a minimal and you keep what you, what you breed, a lot of people prefer to have a female so they can just breed and they can keep as many puppies as they possibly can 
and just raise that one generation at a time versus people that don't mind breathing out to other people. Those are the people that tend to like, yeah, I want to stud. Me, I wanted both, even though I was keeping everything. It didn't matter to me because a, a, a good buddy of mine could always come up and say, hey, man, let me breed to your stud. I'm shit, go ahead. Chunk me two puppies. Uh, shit, go ahead. Do it for free. Here, yeah, I'll get back with you later and we'll do a breeding together. That's just the type of person that, that, that I always have been. So either one, they both just as important to me in the breed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's real shit. My bad. I was grubby. I ain't got these good old munchies. No, we just going in. We've we, we been in here. We've we been in here, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, he said, talk to sound like Jada Kiss. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. yes, sir. What else we go? What else we go? Bust down, y'all. We we've been on here. You know what y'all you know, doing? Chat. Chat. What else y'all want us you know to talk about? We've been out here, man. I'll be hella questions. I'll be trying to ask. What's going on? Or I'll be trying to answer. Rather, shit. Ask us now while we on here. Yeah, uh, he said he been telling people. Hold up. Who's this? Clem Crew. He said he's been telling people lately, quit hoping for success, trying to get lucky with subpar dogs. Um, but most dudes aren't trying to know their dogs to the fullest like that these days anyway. Yeah, you know, a lot of motherfuckers coddle that shit. If they fucking not trying to just pedal it, they coddling it for the most part, you know. And you ain't going to get, you know, down to the core of the good dogs like that. You know, it suck fucking calling, but it's a necessary process. You know, you spent two years of your life raising this dog and if he don't pan out. Now you got to take him out your program. You know, that shit suck, but you got to do it to get down to the good shit, man. Ain't no fucking shortcuts about it. No, yeah. the, easiest, the easiest way is it's the people in certain situations. It's a lot of times when you it's your own shit and you breeding it and you putting it together. You know what you're gunning for. You know the party. A lot of that come into play with people who purchase dogs and they feel they trapped in the breed net because they bought it. If you buy something and it don't pan out, it's the same as if you bred it. You know what I mean? People treat it differently because they spend that money on it. And then it's like, I got to do this. That ain't always the case. You got to keep it 100 across the board. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, you know, it just goes to show, like behind closed doors, that's when the yards get good. You know, when when the microscope's not on you and you're forced to make the make the decisions that need to be made. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's period. If it's a dog, you know, he might be throwing bow-legged dogs, but he, you know, he bred good as shit. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, what what could you do with that? Why would you? want to keep that going why would you want to keep that gene pool going you know so it's all about i look at it go ahead ma i look at it man you know everybody I, when you look at the, the the screen you can see each of our uh, own likes of uh, obviously dogs because you got that dog i got mine and and everybody. everybody got their own version and vision of these dogs so i i don't never tell a person uh me personally you know why they this way why they breathe that way you know that's the beauty of this uh, line of dogs you know what I'm saying there's so many different looks of them so many different strains and all that so you know <clears throat> you know me personally it's it's too it's too much work to even try to talk about to try to correct another man uh how they breathe you know what I'm saying so I just be more or less man left person they got these dogs you know, like we're out here, we chalking it up with dogs, and this is, uh, you know, what it is. We just chalking it up with dogs. And if people breeding dogs, whatever they doing, they breeding dogs, and to each their own. The competition comes on an individual uh, basis. You know what you're doing personally. So you know, you know, I mean, the breed standards are obviously there, and people still within that, people still are gonna do what they do. You know, so 
to each his own with the dog. Some people are like, oh, this person ain't that he ain't doing this or he needs to take that out. Man, shit. Everybody like what they like. Yeah, and these dogs is literally in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, there's good dogs out there. That's that's for sure. Gordon Lewis had a crazy question. He said Daibo was born blue, turned red, and then black nose. Y'all ever heard of that? You know, I'm at the home of the Daibo shit. And I never heard of that one, bro. Nah, I never heard of that. That's people telling us. No, that's he's talking about. No, he's talking about there. He, I, I know what he's referring to. There's a guy was talking about uh, going to the Mayfield. Um, there is a Mayfield yeah. video. It's a Mayfield video. Mayfield's talking about one of the dogs. It's called Lil Dibo. And you know, if you listen to Mayfield video, you, you with any old timer, you only you gotta eat the meat, spit out the bone. So he's talking about the the one dog saying it was a blue mouth, and he's making the, the a red dog too complicated. I do understand when yeah. dogs are first born. I haven't seen them be silver, and they kind of turns colors. Uh, uh, they they turns uh colors or whatever, but. He's having these people have a big debate on uh, about the dog as being blue, and you know that that with these and these dogs, soon as somebody an old timer say blue, uh, the, here come the uh, the people with the who love the blues pop up and uh, everything else. So you know again okay. referring to a, a video that Mayfield he's doing the dog, yeah. yeah. You know, no, I'm, I'm my business. Video. Business doing good. You know, I ain't never heard of that. I just be in my own lane, though. So you know, I appreciate that bit of information because I had never heard that before. I ain't even know it was a debate going on about that yeah. shit. That was just one of Mayfield story times. I that's why I would pull out my mom did it. Uh, seven eight seven eight. Mm -hmm. Creeping on in. Yo, can you hear me? You know, uh, yes, sir. yes, sir. He was another guy in there that in the, in the chat. Uh, most, of them, the most of them dog men. It's... Go ahead, go ahead. Mo most of them dog men will tell you these crazy ass stories because when they were young. You know, it's kind of like, uh, like on the. I don't know if you look at it on the streets. You know what I'm saying? I'm from. Well, I'm, I'm sure we all been around the streets. One guy, he looks up to a certain guy, and, and then time goes by, he's that dude. And the story is just. Uh, it's almost like uh, putting a pigeon and making him a dragon. You know, <clears throat> a lot of these stories, and from these old dog men, be uh, uh, full of shit. You know what I'm saying? And and they do it just to, you know, for the next generation, in my opinion. Just to, so they can have the same nostalgia when when they gone. And Mayfield, if you look at it, you have May people who love Mayfield and his. I mean, people are damn near like Jim Jones with Mayfield and uh, how it's breeding that Pierce of the Pierce shit. You know what I'm saying? That old uh, concept right there. I don't know if anybody, you guys on the panel, ever, you know, heard how he was always talking about the Pierce of the Pierce. You know, yeah. shout out to Mayfield, but there's there's some things that. You know, uh, uh, a person just ain't gonna just uh, tell me. Even if you've been in the game, you know, sixty years. You know, again with that blue nose stuff. You know, if you guys go look at the video, the Mayfield video, you'd be like, man, what the hell are they talking about? So, but you got some cats that to run with it, and that almost kind of how how these myths, you know, that we hear about uh, the Gator Mouth and all these little because of people stuff like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some kind almost missing. Most inf it's almost misinformation, you know, leading them purposely, you know what I'm saying? You know, so I don't know. Hey, you We're know in the what? world of information, bro. This the this the information oh. era. Yeah, you say, can go to Google may, and may look feel, up people. Oh, go, go ahead, Ma. Oh, I'm about to say you can go to Google and look up people and look what it says. You'll be like, man, they'll They'll say it has anything. So this world of information, a lot of people don't understand just because it's on the internet. Uh, uh, it, it's a whole bunch of bullshit out there. Again, you got to eat the meat, spit out the bone. And you know what I'm saying? And I don't know what you do with the fat, but you know what I'm saying? It is what it is on that. But go ahead, Sam. This is an important question I want to uh, everybody to weigh in on. Uh, how do you guys feel about Puppy Chow as far as good or the best uh, names? Name brands. 
Well, I say you feed what you could afford, bro. You know, it's good to want to keep up with the fads and feed, you know, what you think the, the next best dog, man, is feeding. But in reality, you know, sometimes it's not a plausible choice for your pockets. So just feed, you know, the, the best shit that you could afford to feed, you know. I didn't see, you know, big dog or big time dog men, motherfuckers feeding old Roy and shit. Motherfucker yeah. buy a whole pile of the old Roy, you yeah. know, and yeah. Yeah. selling his dog three, four thousand dollars, you know. The, the, the people's favorite dog man yeah. using that shit. <laughs> exactly. But that's, you can't get mad at a motherfucker. Who hey, got, yeah, yeah, you know. Motherfucker, motherfucker got 50 dogs on the yard. They're going to get it how they live. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, ain't nobody they, you know, feeding origin with 50 dogs. You right, know what? Right. You know, they're going to feed as long as these dogs are healthy. They're producing, they're performing. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's cool. You know what I mean? Everybody do what they got to do. You know what I'm saying? Me personally, I ain't got that many dogs, but and even with me, you know what I'm saying, I feed my dogs uh, 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 that blue wilderness shit. That's supposed to be top of the line, good, good kibble. I feed them that and I mix it with some, uh, some raw. I ain't chopping up no vegetables for no dog. I'm not doing it. And now other people will, but I'm not, I don't see myself in the kitchen chopping up no vegetables for no hound. Motherfucker, you're going to eat this kibble, you're going to take this meat, and you're going to be happy. You're going to shut the fuck up. That's how I look at it. Yeah. I'm not, I ain't chopping up no motherfucking um, sweet potatoes and uh, no motherfucking nothing. They, they, got good, uh, they got good plant based kibbles, though. So if you're doing yeah, yeah, that, that, raw, that blue, the, the uh, go to blue a, wilderness, a heavy is plant shit. based uh, uh, kibble. That blue you, wilderness you is some, it's some good kibble, bro. It, it they they shit look yeah. different and everything on that, uh, compared to when I used to feed my dogs, uh, like a uh, uh, dog chow, that Farina dog chow shit. Uh, that shit you get to get a hundred pound bag for a dollar at Walmart and shit. That shit, I look, their dogs, they shit look totally different when you feed them that um blue wilderness stuff. So I've been fucking with that, you know what I mean? But uh, um, I, I'm not like. Gonna do all this extra shit for me. I give them some meat, some raw food and stuff, and some kibble, and them motherfuckers gonna, they gonna have to be happy with that shit. You know what I mean? I ain't gonna do all this extra shit for them. Like, it's just too much. You know what I mean? So I can imagine somebody with 40, 50 fucking hounds. I know they ain't doing that shit. That shit look good on YouTube videos or some shit like that. But in reality, look here. Old Roy and Al Poe like a motherfucker for your favorite, your favorite kennel. Y'all go buy these dogs. Y'all paying twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars. The motherfucker was raised off of uh, Old Roy and Alpo like a motherfucker. I know this factually. Uh, yeah, I I can trust that. Then, then you get them back to the house. You feed them all that rich shit. He, he shit all over them. Yeah, <laughs> motherfucker, it'd be a shock to the system. He's like, oh shit, okay. We got some gourmet Bulldog shit going kid. now. Bulldog kid, the super chat. We're conditioning. Do you feel you can bring a dog to his peak without a meal and just use road work, using a bike, walking, and flirt uh, work? Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, the, yeah. The, mill, the mill is a cheat code. The mill is a yeah. cheat code. That, that's what that yeah. mill is. It's a cheat like, code. You know, I live in the city, so it's <laughs> always loose dogs, and I'll be wanting to go out and you know ride the bike with my dog. Or the ground is too fucking hot. Like, you know, we in the middle of October, it's still 110 degrees out here. You feel me? So that well, milk comes like, in. It's the just like how he was talking about that feed. But it's yep. like, uh, it's, you want to be. It's what you can pull off. It's like, a uh, let's say, a football player. If If you train on turf and if you train on grass, your ankles and shit's going to be stronger. If if you sit on grass, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, because you get more resistance working. Exactly, it's more rough terrain. It's it's unexpected movements, you know. Versus the mill, it's all kind of like repetitious, you know. Uh, when you're working out, you kind of don't want to uh, your body to get used to what you're doing. You know, you you want to switch switch shit up, and you know if you're just gonna just do mill only. You know what I'm saying? You could uh, be be running them stale, or you know, just not really giving giving him the the full potential. But you know, you got smart dogs. Some of them run on the mill. You know, you lead a room, and uh, you know, I've had cameras on them. You know, to to monitor them and watch them. And I, I've had dogs that will go all the way to a walk 
just a straight walk and just keep walking just for hours. You know what I'm saying? Just, and it's just like walking a dog for hours. You know, he's not running, you know, and it's just good for him. He's not really exerting too much energy, but he's keeping that movement and it's getting him into tip top shape. So either way, you know, but you know, that meal is, is repetitious. You definitely want to do other stuff like flirt and bike and, you know, roll work with that meal too. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, people with the meal, they're not, they're not out the woods totally, but you know, a meal is, you know, like if it's a rainy day, you're lazy, you know, something, you know, meal, it comes in handy. It does. Hey, yeah, Tony, you, you, you can go to town with a spray bottle. Feeding old Roy. He said we know people who feed old Roy. And also ain't feed what you can and feed what you can't afford, you know. And if you can't afford to feed the good shit because you got too many dogs, then, of course, you know, cut that shit back. But ain't nobody sitting over here talking about feeding the old Roy, you know, exclusively. Just, you know, I always say feed what you can. But in my mind, you know, it's the best shit that you could afford. If you can't afford, you know, no origin for 20 dogs, you know, feed the next best thing, get the taste of the wild or whatever. But hell no, no old Roy. We were saying some of the most famous and favorite dog mans feed that bullshit. Right. <laughs> and that's the thing, too. Yeah. Like, it's, it's about, praise. like you said, it's about what you can afford to feed your dog. Like, as long as you feed your dog and he's eating dog food, like, I'm not, bro, listen, some of y'all borderline tree huggers out this motherfucker. Real for real. Like yeah. I spoil my dogs and shit. I spoil them. I give them extra meat and shit like that. I like to, you know what I'm saying? You know, I like to uh keep my dogs a little bit on the hefty side just in case some go bad. And you motherfuckers might not, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you might have to you might tough it out. You know what I'm saying? Now I learned that from hey. my granddad. He always said, keep the motherfuckers about, you know, five, ten, you know, five pounds over just in case, you know, something happens. And you had to go a couple of days without. That's how I, that's how I was raised. Like you know what I'm saying. You know if you ain't out here hunting your dogs and shit, don't I mean whatever. So that's how I look at the shit. I spoil my dogs and shit, but I'm not. I don't go to somebody's house and I see him. He feeding his dog old Roy. I'm like, oh man, you gave me a dog old oh, Roy. That ain't how you feed no hound. The hound need to have this. Need to have that. Man, get out of here. Some of y'all favorite dogs throughout history uh, uh, was eating bullshit for real, for real. Some of them motherfuckers yeah. only ate twice a week. But that shit made you made me respect genetics a whole lot. Just from knowing and being and seeing some yards and seeing what they was feeding and the, how good they dogs still look. You know what I mean? It made me have a whole new respect for genetics and, and knowing how stuff is without all the secret sauce on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Facts. Because uh, uh, you really can't equate what you feed a dog to, you know, how much you pay on your rent. If you don't pay shit on your rent, you and your dog about to be homeless. But if you can't buy your dog no fucking origin, you know, you still got a place to stay, bro. I get what you're saying, though, but, you know, no. Feed what you can feed, you know. The best that you can afford to feed. Yeah, as long as that dog oh, eating. Yeah, dog healthy, dog eating and shit, he'd be good, man. I'm going to no, what you can afford to. You know what I'm saying? It don't make no sense to buy some bag of dog food for fifty dollars. It's a it's a it's a thirteen pound bag and shit for fifty dollars. And then that shit run out and then you all damn I gotta wait till I get paid to get some more food. Nigga, fuck all that. Get what you can afford. You might as well go ahead and, and, and buy you a couple bags of dog food from Walmart, and feed your dog. Ain't nobody judging you on here. I'm not one of them people. I don't do all that weird shit. Oh he, he ain't feeding his dog the right way. That's why I feed raw too, though, because it's cheaper and you get good quality nutrients, you know. Plus, I don't got a bunch of dogs. So my feed bill be a hundred bucks every two weeks, type shit, you know. I told y'all so, before. So, hold up. Also, Hello, hold up, man. You can. You gotta talk when yeah. you say hold up, though, Buck. <laughs> Nah, you guys, you, you guys keep butting in, so should I just be quiet? <laughs> but a lot of people don't know. Oh, shit, I fucked do, up. I, I go to, you guys hear it? Yeah. Yeah, I okay. you. Huh? 
Yeah, we can hear you, Brody. Can you hear us? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Ma got that Obama phone kicking uh, in. Oh yeah, he still got say, um, uh, Another thing is, is what I do is, what what I do is go to my um local uh butcher. Yeah, I was going. What the hell? I never did the math on that. Uh, Yeah, how much is in that case of that quarters for 22 bucks? I never did the math. Like I hear people always say it's cheaper to feed fucking yeah, well, you know, I'm here because uh, I just yeah. go like oh, a 40 pound, a 40 pound case. Yeah, I get a 50 pound case for fucking 25 bucks. You know, that's 50 pounds of food right there. You know, I only yeah, got two dogs at the house and then you know, three more dogs that's you know still on the other yard, but, but they you're still not just gonna give them a pound of raw though. You're not just gonna oh, give no. them. You know, give them the you know they greens. They, like, uh, like 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 let's let's say let's say all right, you got a forty pound bag of uh, dog food. You you getting more than forty scoops out that bitch. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So but if you were to like do a side by side, like you feed, you know, one animal this much raw and then you take that 40 pound of dog food, you'll run out around the same time. You'll be within like two or three days of each other. You know? I, me personally, I think you got to give them more. Um, I think you'll have to give them. I think a pound of dog food will go longer than a pound of, of raw. Cause I think with a they pound done. of dog food, you could feed probably a couple dogs in a single they day. Done. They digest raw totally different. That the digestion on that raw, is yeah, that's totally a, different than the hard food. Yeah, yeah. I I, I yeah, give yeah, a, a pound of. A, so what are you saying? You give your dog a, a, a half a pound a day of food, or what? No, nah, I'm doing. If I do raw, man, you getting your leg quarter. You getting the big ass leg quarter. Per dog and whatever a big ass leg yep. of these damn steroid chick these damn steroid chickens and shit. That's what I'm saying. So you ain't get, like he said, a case for 22 bucks. You ain't getting 40 leg quarters in that joint. I don't know, man. Shit, I get a 50 pound box of leg quarters. Know, about about this weekend and I can't. You, 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 you see what I'm saying? saying? Gosh, you, you, gosh, you, gosh, you got you gotta you gotta you gotta think you getting like nine, ten leg quarters with the red bag for seven ninety nine. Yeah, that's just like what I get. Not, that's what I get. I don't know yeah, if it's yeah, like just... seven or eight, man. Yeah. Oh, right. I got, I got, that big ass, that big ass chickens and shit, man. Come yeah. on, man. That bag right. heavy I get, as shit. I get, that's that's that that's that jailhouse uh, leg quarters. Ten pound bag, huh? That's, that's some them ridiculous ass leg quarters. That steroid chicken. I get uh, I get ten pound bag of leg quarters for five dollars. Sometimes four dollars if they don't sell, but. Five to six dollars, they you know, depending on where I go. Ten pound bag leg quarters. I usually get three of them. All right, and I do forty three quarters in a in a forty pound bag. Huh? He said forty three quarters in a, in a forty pound. Well, bag. I, I don't know how many come in up in a bag, but I usually get ten pound bag of uh ten pound bag in a piece, and I get like three bags, and I break that down with my dog, and I, I give that shit. You know what I'm saying? But I I mean I feed my dog a little different because I, I tried some. Some stuff and some experimentation. My dog's nice and hefty. They big, and I mean, if you knew how I fed my dog, you know what I'm saying. I ain't gonna say on here because tree huggers and shit. But I feed my dog differently, and they straight. The motherfuckers still swole, big. You know what I'm saying? They good. I give them ten pounds of food when I feed them. Ten pound bag of leg quarters. You know what I'm saying? They eat that shit, and they be good. Next time I decide to feed their ass, and they still swole. Straight, they still go outside and shit, and they're good. You know what I'm saying? My cleanup is good. They ain't all skinny and looking emaciated. None of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I know check, what you're talking about, breed. 78, and I feel you. For sure. Y'all, y'all check y'all uh, go to the grocery store and um, go to the butcher, and they be having the scraps. Uh, ask them how what, if they got any chicken scraps. You know when they cut the little legs and the, uh, skin them, and you'll get. Uh, pounds of them, uh, 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 the scraps. We got the little chicken fat of them. They'll have them back there, and they'll set them out for you. I, I do that around my about four grocery stores around my neighborhood too. 
So just to keep in mind, in the butchers, uh, they'll sell them to you a little big old thing of scraps for a couple of bucks. The yep. chicken scraps. One of the brothers in the chat asked uh, for the cold months, uh, do y'all bring y'all dogs in? You know, out here, it's always fucking hot. Like today is 110 degrees, you know. It really um, only get cold for like two months out here. So I don't about the dog game when it's cold, not not here. I mean, it get cold, it get like nine degrees sometimes. It'll get down to 17, 18 degrees here. I don't bring them in because shit, they body adjust to that shit, and I feed them up accordingly. Like like uh, y'all will see, I knew a dude, old Roy, whatever. He throw them straps in there and fatten them up for the for the winter. Throw a little lard in there, and that's how he do. I just mix a little bit more fat into my into my feed during the winter months. I fatten them up a little bit more and they be good. Put some hay in, they do put some hay in their dog houses, close that hole off the entry hole a little bit tighter so the wind don't cut in there and it be good. Yeah, I live in Wisconsin, so it get real cold out here in the wintertime. It get like it can get below zero a lot, you know what I'm saying? But my dogs is in uh in shelter, they in shelter and stuff. Uh, outside um, they're not in my house, but they in shelter and then kennels and stuff like that. And I put hay down like that and I just make sure I feed them and I got heaters. Um, I put heaters out there and shit for them. You know what I mean? But I make sure I feed them accordingly because I know when they be outside, they, they get cold, they'll shiver and they'll burn off calories and stuff like that. So, uh, I, uh, what I do is, now this is going to sound a little weird to y'all, but what I do is, cause like I, I like to spoil my dog. So, I feed them, and well, let me make this clear. In the wintertime, I feed them every day. I make sure they eat every day in the winter. They're going to be outside too cold not to be eating every day. Then I also make sure that uh, what I do is when I'm making burgers and uh, 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 steaks and shit like that, I have my daughter, she scrape out them skillets. She take all that fat from them burgers, put that yeah. shit. I save all that shit, put it in the refrigerator. And then the next, every time I make it, so so then I take that shit and mix it in with they motherfucking kibble and shit like that. They be fucking that shit up. That's extra calories, extra fat. Yeah, and you know that's real fat because it's from an animal. So you right. know they gonna get more nutrients since you know a dog run better on fat than protein. So, so yeah, yeah, I do that too though. You know that's a good old school trick, but only with you know real animal fat. Mm -hmm. Not no fucking canola oil or nothing right. like that. Your French right. fried grease don't give them none of that shit. But right. like yeah. I said, if you go make the burger, yeah, I don't eat pork. So, but yeah, bacon that's a good source of fat. That you know, beef, you you cook up that ground beef and all that shit. Yeah, yeah. All, that, yeah all that shit that drip down from the former grill. Take all that shit. Hell yeah, mix it up with your dog food, man. But you know, like I say, because it's always hot out here. So that's one reason I feed raw. Somebody in the chat said, you know, it do make your dogs a little thinner. But you know, my dogs do better like that. Like this summer, it got up, you know, in the high 120s. You feel me? And motherfucking hardy dogs like that ain't finna make it. <laughs> and motherfucking yeah. out here dead, you fucking five pounds overweight. That should have killed you out here. Right, I said, I'm going to tell for the chat, for the people in the chat. Your climate plays a big part on how you, how like dog men in different climates have a whole different regiment of, of shit that they do. People in the hot states is different than the people who get below zero. Everything is different. So it's really predicated off your climate. Cause I'm, I'm kind of in a ram situation. I fear the heat way more than I fear the cold. Like it's easy to take care of them dogs in the cold and me than it is to deal with them dogs in, in the heat. You get man, man get he can take them out quick, bro. Like quick, school is they fucking overheat, man. You kidney failure and the motherfucker dead. And he'd be like, "What the fuck?" So yeah, I try to keep mine as close as possible, you know, just to keep them alive. Yeah, overweight dogs don't live long down here, bro. Yeah, sure <laughs> don't. And that's what that's what come in when when uh, Thompson taught me about that dry day. I still remember I interviewed him. That's the first time I ever heard about a dry day. When I implemented that shit, it was the best shit ever. When I implemented that, I saw a difference in my dog. I saw a difference in their health and everything. They they eat more healthy with that dry day. They they feel better. They well, let Thompson explain to the chat what a dry day is for those who didn't watch the video. You know, I I do dry days with those dogs where I don't feed them anything. 
because you know people they are descendants from wolves and depending on your climate like dogs in the heat they don't put down food like dogs in the cold weather environment they process the food totally different in the heat so some days you have to do those dry days to clean them dogs out so they can empty themselves out because the food process is totally different in the temperature that the dog is in what that's why winter time you can feed more food and them dogs can put it down and they process it correctly. And summertime, you give them all that food, they'll sit out in that heat and puke that shit up. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or, they, or they'll, they'll, they won't process it and you constantly get in bad stools. Like you got to feed accordingly to the temperature. If you're in the hot, a lot of people in the heat, they feed later on in the day or at night. You know, wintertime, you want to be out there early. If you're in a cold state feeding, you want to get that food on them early. So they have all day to be good and warm and shit, and they got a belly full, just like I'm, I'm from Brooklyn. They used to be cold as fuck. You got to get a, a bowl of oatmeal in you before you start hiking through five feet of snow to walk to school. You know what I mean? Shit's real. Yeah. Facts. Like, I feed I feed at night just because it's cooler. You know, a dog body temperature going to raise to digest the food. So while I'm feeding them in the morning, you know, it's 90 degrees, and by 12 o'clock come, it's fucking 115. And the dog temperature raising up still, you know, he got internal heat and external heat to try to fight. So you yeah, always feed at night, even in the winter, though, you know, because it, like I said, don't get that cold out here. To me, it'd be cold, but in reality, it's not that cold. You know, cold when you come out here to the Midwest. Oh, yeah, I used to live in Chicago. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know what that is. Yeah, you know it's cold when you step outside and smoke a square. And you want to square bad the motherfucker, you take one puff and like, nope, that's it. I'm going back. Fuck this. The hell yeah. The, the need to be warm uh, supersedes any fucking addic addiction. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's they call it the hawk. Old folks call it the hawk and shit. Yeah, that hawk come down on your ass, boy. This is, that's a life change. Then y'all got the wind chill factor, too. So the yeah. wind blowing, knock another 10 degrees off that shit. You know, I'm cool on that cold yeah. shit. Hey, hey y'all yeah, got to yeah. put water in there. Don't y'all gotta put water? Y'all gotta put water with y'all feed in that yeah. cold, cause they ain't them dogs ain't lapping no water up in that freezing. We, no, so. we gotta. Uh, what I do is, oh, that's a good. That's a good how you brought that up, cause yeah, if I put the water in, this is water in their bowl. Within a couple of hours, the water gonna be froze. That's how cold it is. You know what I'm saying? So what I started doing was, uh, I put the heater. Uh, I got a heater by each one of my uh, kennel rooms. Right, like a like a space heater, if you will. All right, and uh, I put it by each one of the kennel runs, but I put the heater right by the dog bowl. I mean, by the water bowl, I should say. So that shit keep that water from uh from freezing up and shit. Cause my boy, yeah, one year I had forgot to put that heater on, but it's before actually I got the heater. Yeah, that shit was. I had that shit sitting on the ground, and came in the motherfucker, and that shit was froze. That nigga had dug into that motherfucker. He had bust into that motherfucker to get that water. I said, my bad little dog. I ain't going to do you like that no more. I had to go get the heater and uh, and uh, make sure my shit was straight so he can uh, have him some liquid, man, because that motherfucker, he in there fucking up that damn ice. Bro, yeah, y'all got a different climate there. The worst cold I ever felt was coming through Ohio and fucking when I was up in Connecticut. Bro, that shit is fucking different. You talking about below zero and the wind cutting across? Yeah, y'all definitely got to put keep them dogs hydrated and keep their water in them. And then they shiver off a lot of weight, too. A lot of people mm -hmm. don't count for You can just feed them like you feed for the summer, but they're going to be shivering that weight off. Yeah, in the wintertime, winter months, I usually switch from uh, chicken leg quarters to uh, ground beef and shit. I usually get them that 73 uh, ground beef, 73% uh, uh, uh with the, with the whatever, 20 some percent fat, 27 percent fat. I usually get that shit and I mix that in with their kibble. And that used to keep some weight on them uh, throughout the winter and shit like that. And then I can always tell, but you know, they, they look decent, you know. And then once the weather started breaking, warming up, I can switch up and uh, go back to the leg quarters and, you know, ho whole chickens and, uh, They'll start trimming up and you know be good and shit, you know. Hey, Johnny Boy just said something that I do that's 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 true in the winter too. You sp uh, sprinkle a little salt in that water and then make them hold up, retain that water a little bit better. Yeah. For the, 
was cold a month. So yeah, he just he just uh, brought that up too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody yeah, told me uh, I use the electrolytes. You can get somebody the told me that that uh that salt and that water that it will make it not freeze too. Yeah. And then somebody and told me that too. Somebody and somebody told me like if you got like I don't know if it's a Gatorade or a water bottle, but you put like heavy salt in a water bottle, fill it up with water. If you put that in your bowl, that bowl is not supposed to freeze. Yeah, but I don't. That should make them thirstier though. I tried that one year. Well, at least with me. I don't no, know no, no, no. The salt's in the water bottle. In the water the bottle. So in the you, water bottle. so you, so you, you just pouring the salt in it with no water. And screw the cap on and put the bottle inside. No, no, the, no, 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 you're putting the water, you're putting water in there too. So you're gonna make, but you're gonna close it up so it ain't gonna contaminate your uh, your drinking water, it's just gonna be in there. But of course, if the dog dig it out, you know what I'm saying? I mean, shit. I get what you're saying. That's yeah, that's like just to keep the water from freezing because that yeah. salt water won't freeze. I get exactly. that. Yeah, I could dig that. Yeah, until, that's they shit, eat uh, the, until they eat the fucking bottle, you was just talking yeah, exactly. about dogs bound exactly. up. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, that's dangerous. You gotta have some pretty docile dogs to do that shit. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, grab a bottle out there, be running around the yard, flipping that motherfucker. Next thing you know, be the bit the top off and swallow that bitch. I but just if you go get below zero. I don't think nothing's gonna stop it from. Yeah, food. I just I try to just go out there twice uh, in the morning and in the afternoon. I try to just go out there. It'd be cold in the bitch, but I try to go out there just make sure. They check their water and shake that uh, bowl a little bit, you know what I'm saying, and uh, shit like that. And uh, sometimes I throw a little uh, 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 fat up in there or something in there in the water. Uh, might throw a little some uh, my secret weapon, you know what I'm saying? Might throw some motherfucking uh, some little fish oil in that bitch or something, you know? Had them lick up that shit, you know? But I don't, I just try to check it twice a day to make sure that they're good because uh, otherwise, you just let it, you do it in the morning, thinking they good. Out in this weather, forget about it. You're going to come out there the next day, that motherfucker, whole bowl, especially if it's a metal bowl, that motherfucker will be froze, stiff, mannequin style. Hey, Clem, like he up in, Atlanta, in Alaska or Canada or something, he say, uh, I, I have three freezers for my dogs, two, two are salmon and halibut uh, fish, fish freezers. And one I keep my deer and, and blackberry in. In the blackberry bear meat is great winter food. Uh, anybody hunting? He sound like he in fucking Canada or Alaska or something. Well, they said a blackberry. Like, nigga, where did you get that meat from? God damn. <laughs> what you you know? about blackberry? He said he keep a he keep a freezer with blackberry, black uh, freezer, uh, blackberry and deer, and he keep another. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, I see the comment. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah, hooked. Yeah, he got him. Yeah, that deer meat, I can get hold of that, but that West bear Coast meat. Mm. Yeah, but I saw that YouTube video yeah, we, with that dude. We, we, he had shot. He had shot a black bear, and he was talking about how to survive out there. And he was like, "Ain't nothing like black bear fat." This motherfucker put like three cubes of black bear fat in the cup, and like rendered the shit down, and just drank the shit like a G on the mountain in the cold. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I I went to the uh, the dispensary a couple uh, weeks ago, and uh, got I'm standing in line. I looked to the goddamn right, broad daylight too. Uh, a muffled black bear. Yeah, yeah I, you, I, I'm you, up in Washington. Him. Yeah, you'll see him for sure. Yeah, yeah. fuck all yeah. that. I'm um, about coyotes and goddamn mountain lions and shit around this bitch. I uh, ain't fucking with no black bear. Yeah, and coyotes and some and, and some of that shit around here too. The main the coyotes. I'd, I'd rather do the black bears than all them snakes and shit down south. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. in the summertime it can get bad on you. Boy, I'm not about fucking with that <laughs> shit. I see them motherfuckers every day. Like I be looking up <laughs> Facebook. Man, it seems like somebody every day got one. To take a picture of the motherfucker, you know. Yeah, man? my partner shot. My partner shot like a six foot rattlesnake in the fucking head, man. You see what I'm saying? Head. Like, come on, man. Right. <laughs> Fuck that. I don't want. I don't want nothing to do with no motherfucker. I can't do that shit. I, I'll take my chances with the black bear. 
<laughs> you know. Them snakes done took plenty of good least, dogs, least she, boy. Them least you can see took some dogs. Least you can see a black bear coming. You know. Yeah. You see a yeah, snake you fuck around, yeah. Right. You fuck around, be smoking a square or some, or smoking some weed, sitting on the motherfucking log, and next thing you know, you hear your dog and, and made a whelp in the motherfucking rattlesnake or some shit and got your motherfucker. Or sitting yeah. at the bank of the river and he come a motherfucking water moccasin or some shit. Fuck that shit, man. What a one the, the, the bad the bad the bad thing is them, them dogs long to kill them motherfuckers. It ain't yeah. even like the snake just roll up and bite your dog. Your dog go out his fucking way to kill them shits, man. I mean them I don't know what it is about them snakes and fucking dogs, man. But them dogs get a hard about the fucking snake, huh? Yeah. And they ain't got no any venom. You know, and they like they some motherfucking uh, uh, mongooses or some shit. Motherfucker, you a dog. Yeah. That's why I stopped keeping my dogs out in the desert, man. Lost so many of them biting to the face and shit, man. You know, by the time you get there, it's damn near over. You get them to the vet and you fucking dying on the way up there, you know. Rattlesnake biting to the face ain't no joke. One dude got bit. He was talking about you know, he need a couple of weeks to heal up. He said, you know, it was his fault. He knew he should have had his boots on before he went out there. You know what I'm saying? It's like a regular thing. Like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I put on my steel toe boots. You know, my hard, thick right. leather come up to your goddamn knee boots. Just because, you, you know, you walking in that <laughs> motherfucker. People get the misnomer that a rattlesnake gonna rattle before it bites you, but the motherfuckers like to bite your ass too, just out of nowhere. Won't even give you no warning. So yeah, them boots, you gotta have them, or you going to the hospital if you going out. Then, then, then what do you do? Then once he hit the boot, you what do you do? Just stomp his ass out, or like what do you do? You you blow that motherfucker's head off, man. man. It look like a, that old Usher video. Yeah, they just so blow his head off. <laughs> you blow that mother, you blow that motherfucker's head off. I ain't stomping no motherfucking rattlesnake. The gun yeah. is out. It's a fucking blow rattlesnake. <laughs> You imagine you imagine you miss that stomp and that motherfucker pop up on you. You you know them motherfuckers extend when they hit you. It ain't like they just roll up on you and bite you. They coil up and they lunge at you. So oh, you yeah. imagine you you go yeah, you to stomp be down and that motherfucker grab you on your thigh or your nuts or some shit, man. Oh hell, yeah, you don't blow that motherfucker at all. You better make sure your aim and you know, everything on. You know, <laughs> yeah, we ain't got it. it look like I'm jumping them in when I get off. Yeah, the I, I take my chance with the black bear. You know, the black bear, he he just coming through looking for some food and shit. You know what I'm saying? He he ain't really just trying to fuck nobody off like like a goddamn rattlesnake. <laughs> yeah, it, it depends on my weapon. If I got a shotgun with me, I'd rather deal with motherfucking black bear and shit. You know what I'm saying? But uh, cause that, that motherfucking rattlesnake sneaky. That motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? You don't know what the fuck going on. I, I, I killed one of the motherfuckers one day. I thought it was a rattlesnake because it looked just like it. Uh, but out here we got uh these shit, these fake ass rattlesnakes called bull snakes. And uh, they act like they look like rattlesnakes, and they act like them. You know I mean, they hiss and all that kind of shit. But they they hiss to imitate uh, the sound of the rattlesnake tail. It's like some bullshit. I don't know how nature nature works funny like that. Imitation that rattlesnake. But this motherfucker, we out there fishing up north, and uh, uh, I hear this hissing noise. I'm like, what the fuck? I look back and I see it. I tell my brother, I say, hey, hey, it's a rattlesnake. But he's looking and shit, and I, I reach into my bag. Grab my little machete and I chop suey that motherfucker boy. I chop suey his ass. And he, he came over, he said, Man, ain't no rattlesnake. I said, Yes, it is. Look at it. He said, Nah, where the rattle away? I said, Oh yeah, damn, where the rattle away? He said, Man, it's a bull snake. They ain't they ain't no different than the damn gardener snake. So well, whatever. Tell him you wasn't playing with that motherfucker though. <laughs> I wasn't playing with his ass. He shouldn't have been hissing at me shit. Fuck yeah. that shit. Well, I'm gonna get hey, I'm gonna get a, the the chat some free advice. If you got snakes or you got venomous snakes in your area, around your yard, don't keep none of that plywood and shit just laying around. Nothing for nothing to be crawling and living underneath. If you in the, if you around them venomous snakes, they run for shade after they get enough sun. So don't leave a bunch of shit around your yard, especially around them dogs 
where shit could be all that leftover wood from building dog houses, stand that shit up. Not lay that shit flat on the ground. Mm-hmm. And might want to keep you some dicks around too. What? Some dicks. Hell, the motherfuckers are behind your shit looking like an elephant, man. Oh, right yeah. there and off and shit, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that shit ain't no joke. Yeah, man. Bro, that's snakes. I can't fuck with no snakes. Buck said, get him for a minute. Yeah, them, them snakes ain't no joke. I ain't, I ain't want to fuck with them, man. But the other wildlife, like, I ain't never been scared of no uh, coyote. I ain't been in the woods and seen coyote. I didn't have my wife and kids with me. We be walking through the woods, trying to go to a fishing spot, see some coyote. My wife, she get the panic. Oh, it's coyote. Ah. Girl, I'll beat you out, coyote. If it's one of them, I'll fuck they him got up. No rabies. They got no rabies. One of them ain't got no rabies. They ain't going to fuck with you anyway. Right. But I said, I told you. Fuck your dog, girl, up. Yeah. I said, look here. If it's one coyote. He done. I'm fucking him all the way up. You know what I'm saying? The pack of them. I, right, you know what I'm saying? We got a, we got a strategy for that. Y'all get the fuck up out of here. You know what I'm saying? But you know, one he getting dealt with. He ain't gonna make it. Man, them fucking coyotes smart though. Man, I've been looking at some videos. Man, they be they be tricking like people's pets and shit. Like they try to get the the dog to run off and chase them into the woods. And they yeah. be a pack of them motherfuckers yeah. out there in the woods waiting on them. Yeah, lure you into a trap. Yeah, yeah, they kiss they kiss the back end of a motherfucker. Like my old buddy uh, back in the day, shit on his yard, the motherfucker used to come out. They'll run through the fucking uh through the fucking chain area, and shit. They'll get a dog chasing them, and then one of one of them will sneak up on them and grab them from the back end and stretch them out. The yeah, sneak your ass. Yeah, <laughs> the motherfuckers. Hey, the motherfuckers, some cold little hunters, man. Yeah, hell yeah, they'll pack your, you and your dog out. You know, they get you further enough in them woods, nigga, you know. They'll fuck your shit up. Yeah, it'd be like 10 of them hoes on your one charge, nigga, and that's a wrap. <laughs> I don't see a lot of, everybody talk about the pig hunting, man, but I know a lot of people bulldogging that go after coyotes because they're a nuisance animal, man. And yeah. The coyotes, they some game fucking animals, man. Yeah. Those, jokes, those, those jokers ain't nothing to play with. Especially when they breeding with wolves and shit. So the mm. motherfucking uh, what you call them? Uh, what you call them motherfucking when they breed with wolves? Koi, koi, yeah, koi wolf. Yeah, koi wolf. That's what it is. They got koi wolf and koi dog. Yeah, some dangerous shit. There's a little park I be going to, and I be going uh doing. Sometimes I do my videos from the little park up there, and uh with my camera at the water. Yeah. The motherfucker, you can hear them shits in the woods. Coyotes, you pack up, yeah, all that old shit. Like shit. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hey, Courtney you know, said he got chased out the woods by a black bear with some pups. That's why I ain't fucking with no black bear. <laughs> hey, they ain't dog I got or ever had could whoop no fucking bear. <laughs> I can get I can you guys, you guys. the head off a snake, fuck a fucking bear. Goddamn. Man, I ain't yeah. got my with my can't win. Yeah, I can. I take the bit. I take the snake all day for the bear. Cause even if you got your piece with you, you you gotta hit that motherfucker about three, four times, and pray he don't jump on you. You saw that movie, The Revenants, when that grizzly bear fucked him oh, up. Yeah. Woods and shit. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that shit. That shit scarred. That shit scarred me for life. Cause I was like, oh hell no, man. Man, they make they, they make uh, man. Hey, my wife was so mad watching that movie. She's like, that's some bullshit. Why this motherfucker, he, he survived everything. You know, I said, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we watch this shit like this motherfucker to survive all kind of animal attacks, falling off of cliffs. And he, he, he just, he's a survivor. This motherfucker is Brett Fire for the wilderness type shit. Fuck out of here, man. That so, motherfucker went through some shit, though, bro. Yeah, he did. <laughs> that fucking bear. That motherfucking bear, man. That shit. Bear man. came the shit out there, fool. <laughs> And you saw he had a one shot. He had a one shot musket, so he got that one shot off, and he had to take all of that, bro. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that bear ass up. Debo, Debo of the woods. <laughs> Buck talking about he gonna wrestle with a barrel with a snake, boy. You better grab a shovel or that stick. Shit, cause you ain't got no shovel or no stick that's gonna stop no fucking bear. Shit. Yeah. Shit, but they got sightings with bears. Like even if you go like. To the national 
parks and shit, like they actually got sightings of these motherfuckers. So you know when that motherfucker's around. The bear ain't gonna sneak up on you. Like you know that motherfucker's in town. You know, motherfuckers know. You know, let me ask you something, but if you got if you got stuck between a between a bear and the field, you can't climb a tree, which you play dead. Shit, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> I see what what thing about me. I don't fuck around with with all that shit. Book say he gonna have that car little that car little Jesse on with speed. Nigga finna get in the wind like a motherfucker. Hell yeah, well, you know, them bears, them bears is fast though. Them bears is fast than a motherfucker, bro. Yeah, you, can't, play you, you can't outrun no bear. I don't care how fast you think you are. You ain't outrunning yeah. no bear. Yeah, you ain't running. But, no but you go, but you gonna play dead? I ain't just gonna lay on the fucking ground. No, no. <laughs> you, 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 gotta, you gotta work your way through that shit. Nah, he, he, he gonna eat me the fuck up. He just gonna eat me the fuck up. Nah, I'm gonna that bear gonna have to show me he's nah, fast. Not, you gotta, you gotta, I ain't buying at that point. At that at that point you at that point you ain't you gonna we gonna have to run one I because I know if I'm gonna get eight my killer instinct coming in and I man I'm gonna be like you know what you bitch just did because I'm gonna die anyway I ain't dying hollow you know what I'm saying and you ain't about to get me on my back neither you better make you die playing you, 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 hey, you die playing uh, day uh, and that yeah, nigga, that you gonna jump on day. Back, he gonna jump on your back and bite a chunk out your shit. You gonna be hollering huh? like a motherfucker. I can't do it. Listen, if you, <laughs> man, my gonna get to working like my hemis, dude. Nigga, I'm we a, going. I'm just, I'm just gonna try to fight that. I'm a first. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm a, I'm, I'm I'm a bluff though first. I'm gonna try I'm bluff it first. Big man, you gotta get big. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna be the human ever to run a 10 second quarter mile. Get I'm gonna act like I'm bigger than his ass. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever you, you know. whatever you do, just don't play dead. Don't play dead. <laughs> don't do that shit. <laughs> 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 Man, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna rough my way through that Just one. I, you... Go ahead, Ma. Yeah, nigga, I'm out. Hey, five that you He gonna have to show bear. me he can run thirty miles an Just hour. Fuck that bear. bear. And 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 it comes in that fatigue. Pick the option because it's three options. You can love P. 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 You got you got three options. You can run the fade with the bear. You can play dead or run. No, I run the bear. We've already agreed with that. So just imagine. I don't agree with that. I don't believe that a bear is going to catch you. You know this nigga. <laughs> this nigga What's that? I'm running. I'm gonna run and then once he catches me, I'm trying to tell you. No, I'm 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 a ten second quarter mile on that bear like I was feeling that night. <laughs> Hey, I'm Who's running. And as soon as he catch me, he's we're catching a fade right there. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna run. And the reason why I ain't gonna run, the reason why I ain't gonna run, Buck, is because the worst thing, the worst thing to do is to be tired and gotta fight. When you tired of fighting, that's the worst shit ever, bro. Trust me, I done been in the wrong neighborhood back in the day, gang banging and shit. You in the wrong neighborhood, <laughs> nigga catch you, they catch you in the you know what I'm saying? You creeping out some bitch house or something, these niggas say, hey, yeah, that's, that's what dude. I'm, seven, eight, nine, yeah, and he, you take you're right, you take off running, and then by the time them niggas catch you, you can't even fight because you tell you like, uh, uh, fuck that shit, man. I might as well just go for it, nigga. You're gonna take me out. Yeah, motherfuckers yeah, out here with motherfuckers out here with smoke with smokers lungs and shit. You, you out here. Just fake dead then. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> you found out <laughs> you got the smokers <laughs> lungs. <laughs> Fuck that shit. <laughs> I can't do it, bro. You got, you I'm got, you go ahead, I'm you got, story, bro. My, 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 my hey, papa, when I was probably a little boy, bro, he sent me to the, shit, nigga, I'm finna, nigga, fight or flight, nigga, I'm gone from that fucking bear, boy. I ain't, but we'll fight later if you catch me. I ain't bullshit. I'm telling you, I'm finna run a hey. 10 second quarter mile getting away from nigga, that bear. I ain't bullshit. <laughs> It depends on how far away that motherfucker is. I gotta look at my options, bro. 
Like yeah, we exactly. in the woods. That, that's what I was about to say. That, if, if, we in the, if we in the woods, like, if, you don't, if you don't see me, right, if you don't right. even see me, you know. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. I'm just gonna, t- I'm just gonna tuck my shit in. I'm just gonna tuck my shit in. I'm gonna tuck my shit in. I'm just gonna tuck my shit in. You gonna leave me alone? What you got in my woods, homie? Please, yeah, if you see if that motherfucker is a good, you know, football field distance away from me, and he, I see him coming through the woods or something. I got tired. If my car is the same distance away the other direction, I'm gone, <laughs> nigga. I'm running. You know what I'm saying? I'm running, nigga. <laughs> I'm running that motherfucker car. But like, but oh, if the motherfucker is um, if that motherfucker, oh shit, hold up, man. All right, I'll give what y'all in a second. <laughs> hey, hey, I had to make that choice once before, bro. I had to make that choice when I was younger. My my grandfather sent me out here to go feed, feed this call these crazy ass horses in to feed. Bro, I was around the pond and I saw the fucking horse coming. Bro, I took off so motherfucking fast, so hard the horse tried to chase me. Bro, I <laughs> ran so motherfucking fast, I dove like through this barbed wire, ain't get touched to nothing. Yeah, oh, this nigga running from a big ass horse. I'm cool on that too. <laughs> <laughs> man, them animals, man, them motherfuckers, man, they wig out. Man, if I can't stomp you out like I do them snakes, I'm giving you a hundred feet of respect, homie. I ain't fucking with you. If I see a bear that's far away, I'm it just mean I got a head start on getting the fuck in the wind. I'm gone. Ten second quarter mile, man, like a hemi, but on foot. You got me fucked up. I ain't playing no bear. I ain't playing dead. You gonna have to catch me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said, <laughs> "Hey, Marcus the Great." He said, "He said you might can get away from a black bear, but them grizzlies aggressive. And now them grizzlies, them motherfuckers can move, man. I seen them running full speed down the side of a mountain, just full speed, like." It's no way humanly possible you can move that fast and be conscious, you know, down the side of that mountain like that. So, yeah, them, them motherfuckers, they'll catch you, man. Well, if ever yeah, that, that, motherfucker, that motherfucker got killed by them grizzlies. Motherfucking case study, because I'm finna outrun that motherfucker. No, <laughs> it was the Netflix, it was See, the Netflix the gonna special on that dude. He gonna sniff you out from a couple football fields. He yeah, gonna sniff your the, ass out. You gonna be like, is that motherfucker the, after me? He gonna be after what was, you. It was a fucking Netflix special on that guy who was living out there with the Grizzlies. He was one of them crazy tree hugging motherfuckers, and he was out there living with them Grizzlies with no guns and shit, and like walking up on them and talking to them. And with his mouth and shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He he invited his girlfriend up there, and the, I guess one of them older ones that ain't fast enough to catch live prey. He was like a man eater, man. He rolled up and ate both their asses, man. That shit ain't no joke. And Lionhead said, anybody encounter, anybody have an encounter with the dog with rabies? I only seen one dog with rabies when I was a kid, and that motherfucker looked damn near like a werewolf. That motherfucker was so crazy. Well, hell no, I stayed the fuck away from them, too. I stay up on my rabies shots, God damn it. Yeah, not, not I that I know. Know. no crazy animal. Yeah, I heard it. Some yeah, I seen him at ill, ill treatment. That nigga and all. You breaking up again, Maul. Your minutes running out. You still on that uh sprint time? Nine that o'clock, boost. you get three minutes. He's on, He's on that boost mobile. Uh the prepay. <laughs> oh. He's still chirping in. Don't don't play boost mobile. I got boost mobile. <laughs> that boost mobile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now it's working, it working yeah, different we have areas. The rabies up in um especially cold weather locations. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm on a, 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 the iPhone. Uh, but the, the rabies hey, is you know, depending on the temperature. Right on the no, okay. You on that? You, uh, you on that? You sprint. Have, like, I, I could tell Ma's on that sprint for sure. Not nigga. I'm on sprint. Mobile. My shit don't sound like that. That, that nigga Ma's no, on T Mobile. T Mobile. You gotta get AT and T, man. Yeah. Get AT and T, bro. Ma got that. 
at and is the shit, bro. I'm telling you. Well, it's only doing it, I guess. It's only it's it's only doing it on the stream. It's only doing it on the stream. Yeah, that uh, <clears throat> but uh, I ain't never seen no uh dog with rabies. I didn't see the uh motherfucker raccoon that I thought had it because <clears throat> that motherfucker was running around. Running through the neighborhood like he wanted all the smoke with everything, you know what I'm saying? And uh, motherfucker Animal Control had to come get that motherfucker, shoot that motherfucker because uh, he was running around, running up on shit, acting fool. No, nah, so I'm in the same boat. I saw Coon with a partner of mine who I get dead high from. <clears throat> he had shot one of the motherfuckers. Like they do weird shit. They be outside stumbling around. You know, you don't usually see coons and shit like that during the, you know what I mean? You just ain't gonna see one just straight rolling around acting weird and shit. He had popped that shit, but he had sent me the picture of that shit, man, and that shit had the same, like, foamy mouth, and it was, like, bloody foamy. Like, that motherfucker was out of his mind, but I ain't never see a dog with it. Mm -hmm. Other than cool, Joe. Oh, shit. You know, we see how that turned out. But that's what that bitch get, though. I'm glad Cujo flexed on that bitch. Bitch running around cheating on her husband and shit. That's what that bitch get. That wasn't, nothing, that wasn't nothing but the devil. Get that bitch. Uh, Cujo caught you slipping. What you doing? Mm -hmm. Where you coming from, bitch? I'm telling. Get your ass in mm -hmm. there. I, now, I remember, that movie. I remember okay. seven eight. I remember seven eight told the story <laughs> about the dog. What do you say? The dog bit the bit the female, and and she uh she said get rid of it. <laughs> oh yeah, man, that's the bullshit. I got rid of that damn dog, man. <clears throat> you know, I was so he should have kept that motherfucker. Yep, that's a good dog too, man. I got rid of him. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm gonna post a picture of him on, on Instagram if I can find an old picture of me and him, but. Yeah, man, I got rid of dude, man, because I love that little chick. I said, man, I like her, man. She's going to work out. And uh, that motherfucker, oh, she's like, he bitter. And she, she playing too much, you know what I'm saying? You know, dogs get jealous sometimes. So I used to have him in a little cage in my room. <clears throat> and uh, she going to let him out and shit. While I'm upstairs, she let him out, trying to play with him. He, he faded her and shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he let her ass know, like, bitch. Should have never opened that door, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, I don't fuck with you, bitch. I don't even right. like you. Your cooch me over funny. I don't fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? He got that bitch. So she's screaming. I run downstairs. Like, what the fuck? So, you know, I, I pick the shit out of him. I'm like, get out of here. Just leave alone. Put him back in the cage. So, oh, yeah, you got to get rid of him. Now, nah, this is ridiculous. This dog just attacked me. I'm like, what you let him out for? What you, what you, how you get out? Oh, I was trying to play with him. I'm like, look, you don't come to nobody's house. Open up the motherfucking cage, let a dog out. What kind of stupid motherfucker is you? This is shit, you know what I'm saying? Black folks don't do shit like that. Fuck wrong with you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, that's what I'm trying to talk to everybody, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man. So, you know, the bitch, you know, I went on, got rid of the dog, man. <clears throat> Being tender dick and shit. I just got rid of the motherfucking dog, man. And then this bitch ran off a month later. She ran off with another nigga. I was so mad. I was mad in the motherfucker. Hey, yeah, my bro had a bad accident like that. Chick came over and he had four, he had four dogs. He had them all in the all in the damn crates and shit. Cause uh people were fucking with him and he was getting ready to take his dog to the show and shit. So he had them all in the fucking crate. He told the girl, she said, Oh, why don't you let him out of play? He said, Hey, I can't let these dogs out and play like that. They don't play like that. Oh, sure they do. He had he had met this chick had been talking to her for about a month. He came over, she was gonna go to the dog show with. Man, that nigga went in the motherfucking bathroom and, and came back out. It was a fucking World War Rumble in that motherfucker. She had opened the cage, let all the dogs out, and was standing on the couch screaming. Mm -hmm. He had oh, to. Bitch, <laughs> don't <crazy> right. He <laughs> bro, he broke that shit up and told that bitch, bitch, get out. Right. She said, but you, but, but, you, but you, you came and got me. He said, find your way home because you're a dumb bitch. I told you don't do that shit. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, you got to walk home now, bitch. <laughs> Hit the brick, bro. I'm gonna I take the bitch. Oh, when, when he came to the show, he came to the show empty handed and shit. I said, Man, why didn't you bring your dog? He said, Man, this dumb ass bitch let these dogs go. He said, Bro, I was in there for about 20 30 minutes trying to break all the motherfuckers up. Royal Rumble in the jungle, boy. Full on bro. prison, right? Like, ah, yeah. god damn. He like my carpet fucked up, bro. 
My fucking, he's like the edge of my couch and shit. I got scrub. She's like, man, my shit fucked up. I'm like, damn. Duh. Hey, I, like I, New York in that bitch. Hey, I, I remember one time I went to go up. Uh, my boys, I went to my boy's house, right? He had this. You guys remember the old school Pedro Jr. stuff, the blood? Right. He had some of that stuff. So uh, we go to the house. We sip and stuff. And there's this one dog named Petey. It's about like five dogs out there. They was like, Ma, go feed Petey. Petey, uh, uh, he kind of like a human biter. You know what I'm saying? So I'll go down out there. I was like, man, I'll go pet all them dogs right now. I go down there. I was on a good one. Nice little. I was drinking some uh, that dark whatever. Go down there. And, and you know what? In fact, I had a, my, I bet my boy $100 that I could go pet all them dogs. So I go down there. <clears throat> put the shoes on and stuff. And um, uh, go down and pet all the dogs. Collected the $100. Now I was juiced, right? So <clears throat> this is like a couple weeks later. I go down there. They was like, "Hey, man, mom, go get that um bo- dog bowl for uh, for Petey," because they was kind of scared of the dog. They was like, "Petey out there tripping today," and they was like, "Well, you fed him, and you he cool with you, man." I go out there. <laughs> <laughs> I go. They had the, my boy had a pile of shoes that you can um put on dog shoes. So I put on his. I switched out shoes. Put on his dog shoes. I go out there go fuck with Petey and shit, and I ain't gonna lie, he did kind of look a little different, and I wasn't juiced, you know what I'm saying? I go out there, man, that motherfucking Petey snatched me up by the shoelace, pulled me up in there, and it was, oh, <laughs> it was out there. Yeah, man, he's getting a hold of me. He was like a, about to hit me on that old alligator, and uh, I get him up, I hit him in his nose with a stick or whatever, man. The shoelace on the <laughs> shoe, you know when you pull the shoelace from the bottom, how t- <laughs> it was. It was like reverse. Yeah, all, all they even pulled the shoelaces all the way from the top and squeezed at the top, but uh, right. it was all tight at the bottom and shit. Man, ripped my pants up. The niggas is laughing and shit, man. God damn it, boy. I, I, don't, I don't fuck with them human biters. No. <laughs> no, <they're laughs> no. Love my ass. That's like that story Buck was telling. Man, <laughs> yeah. he had, when he was telling that story, I I related to him. Uh, old Petey. I, I think, uh, 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 but you might remember Petey uh, back when Red Man and Tall Cannon, and them guys back in the days in the nineties. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah salute yeah, to yeah, yeah. Line. Yeah, man, that's my guy right there. What up, uh, cousin? Hey, the great. He said, uh, "Why did Hollisworth choose yellow over buck <coughs> to breed the dolly?" Probably he wanted that out. You know, going back in the buck is just putting more bolio up there. You know, mm-hmm. he might have thought he needed it out and might have wanted to take it back, but that out was so great. You know, he just. Road with that is what I'm guessing, but it's all speculation without being able to ask him what y'all got on it. Well, he took Bull back to Dolly to get crashed, so uh, I don't know what the sequence was. And uh, I, I you think, know, I I think when they looked at them dogs, I think we was talking about it uh, a while back uh, ago. There's a um a lot of of uh, the the people look at names instead of the dogs, so there's a lot of commonality. With the uh, the yellow dogs that they have with the uh, 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 with the um, the tombstone bolio dogs, and that being the old family red nose blood that along with the um, the the red boy, and then that a little bit up in that Jocko the Ross stuff, whatever you go got that him filled. But I don't believe they, they he just uh, he just put them two lines together and it clicked like that by accident. I think that he had foresight on where he was breeding. And hence, you know, it's been done before, you know what I'm saying? Right, so right. in my opinion, my opinion, I think that uh, he purposely did that for a cross, but he was still looking to kind of stay within the line of that uh, old family red nose. Cause again, that, um, that black widow stuff, they were black dogs, but a lot of them people were uh, getting them old family red nose dogs and specifically keeping the, uh, the red ones, you know, him, Phil, him, Phil did it. He had black ones and he had Brendel ones, but he specifically uh, bred on the uh, red ones as well as Holland with Hollinsworth did also. You know what I'm saying? And, Bob Wallace did that shit too. Yeah, exactly. They specifically uh, bred on the color for whatever reason. But I think with uh, I think when uh, Tank got that dog from uh, uh, that cross, I think that he may have got that. Uh, that may have been his way of calling that a uh, dog uh yellow because of the color out of his yard i don't know about that how uh down that part right there after he how tent got the dog if anybody could probably tell that story but um yeah i think that he made that cross because it was a cross for the mayfield because uh them of the three families of dogs back then was the dibo stuff 
the old family red and then that Kobe dime, you know what I'm saying? Stuff. That's what I always say, double dime. If you look at them dogs, they'll all consist of that. And you go, you know, so that's my opinion on it. Mm -hmm. Well said. I agree with you, homie. I was going to say that yes, too. Sir. I think somebody, I was going to say, I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, I think that that cross was, was done before or, or somebody, I, he had, I think he knew what he was doing. I don't think it was that simple as to, he just decided just to try it out. I think he knew what he was doing. Yeah, I agree. I think it's been done before and it was proven to work. I mean, look at look at what both of those dogs are bringing to the table. You're getting a complete dog in that cross. You know what I mean? You're getting, you're still getting durability. You're still getting roughness. You're still getting mouth. You're still getting wind. So each one of them strands brings something totally different to that table. Where was uh, Hollingsworth from? Uh, uh, what, did anybody know? Was he was he out of the um, North Carolina or or what? Anybody know? No, I don't even know, bro. That's a good question. Anybody in the chat know where Hollingsworth was originally from? I don't know where he's from. <laughs> Them Carolina dogs uh, all have, uh, if you guys uh, pay attention or anybody uh, looks on, uh, you know, geographic, you know, plays a part in bloodlines. And um, them Carolina dogs, <clears throat> that that combination uh, was running around down there uh, quite often down there. And that's why most people call Red Boy Jocko. I think one of, one of them were dubbed the 50 50 cross. <laughs> And they, but also they call them Carolina dogs for a reason because that uh, that blood because you guys gotta um think about the assassin dogs too you know what I'm saying of the red boy strain which is uh, you'll see if they're black they call them black red boy dogs yeah. and so <clears throat> that uh, uh that combination had been like we I think what pulled up a dog that had the combination so I think if we looked and see where Hollingsworth was was out of it could probably tell you something also. You know, if we follow the footprints, you know, or following the footprints of what he was thinking, you know. Yeah, I'd be down south somewhere. Yeah, because it's, it's yeah. Depending, yeah. On, depending on what Carolina is you in, like North Carolina, you got Eli Bolio, South Carolina. That's what, that's Red Boy Jock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tony said North Carolina. He think I'm pretty sure yeah. that's accurate. You heard that before. Salute, bro. Good looking. Yeah, that that bullet blood too. Uh, uh, whoever said that 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 bullet blood's down in um, Carolina also. Uh, so you know, you know, if you ever look at some some um other pets of Red Boy, I've seen one that somebody said that Red Boy was actually off tip, which is a, a grandson of Cotton's bullet, which and they say that's why it clicks so good with Carver, because if you notice the new cross with the red boy are them carver dogs outside of jeep obviously being one but uh you know there's a lot of um the car that red boy has been a real good catalyst of the carver stuff which one that um ram said he's getting is that high set that a uh, red boys that holland stuff on that winky dogs that actually balanced them dogs out they had a whole they were actually lopsided if you know what i mean you know what i'm saying so yeah. that that boy uh, yeah, that that boy uh, 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 balanced him out way uh, better. Uh, you know, gave him that just that balance that it needed to them um, red boy dog, or excuse me, to the uh, the Satch dog. So, but yeah, if if Hollingsworth is out of Carolina, you know, it could he could have did the dogs just knowing that it was a brand of um, you know took the the homegrown stuff, which is the red boy Jocko stuff, and cross it to the Patrick blood. And seen you, he could have just threw a um rock, you know, a rock up or a coin up in the air, and and it landed on heads, and you know, hit the jackpot, or you know, he he knew what he was doing. Man, and then, you know that's man. Just think of the luxury this motherfucker had back then, bro. Where they was all cool with each other to the point where a motherfucker could just breed you. You could breed to dogs that end up being legendary dogs. You know what I'm saying? And anytime you feel like you know what I'm saying. You got you a bitch that's in heat. You like, hey, I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna drive ten miles down the road and stick my shit to Grand to Grand Champion Buck. I'm gonna go stick my shit to motherfucking whoever. You know, hey man, please. If you got access today, motherfucker be hiding this shit today, boy. Hell yeah, yeah. yeah, motherfuckers ain't gonna respect the game. You know, like how you you feel it should be respected when you extend your blood out there to them. So. 
I mm-hmm. get it. You know, my homeboy in the chat, he liked that, but he also one of the only cats in the whole state I'll fucking go get a dog from, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's just, you know, because he got them type of standards. You know, he fuck with you, you get one, and you know, the people he fuck with is far and few in between, and you know, they all trill motherfuckers. They all do what they say type shit, so, you know, the cats is like that, it's still out there, but they just, you know, you gotta find them. You feel me? And that's my young homie, and he like that, but that's why I fuck with him. Mm-hmm. You know, I can honestly say I, I bred I bred to the dogs that I bred to for free like that. The champions and grand champions that I bred to when I did, I bred to them for free like that. It was just good people that was like, shit, bro, I know you ain't gonna fuck over my blood. I know you ain't gonna send it every which way. Shit, I like what you got. You like what I got. Come on, let's get together and do it. Right. So, I mean, it, it still work like that today. It just yeah. shit has being, being around them people. Right, they just they just keep the circle tight because like yep. that's the thing because you know you want to be around people like that who are solid to the point where y'all look out for each other. Motherfucker ever fall off or something or leave the game, want to get back in the game? Shit, you ain't got to spend a dollar. Motherfucker, like here, here, here you go, here you go. Fuck exactly. You. Hey, cause oh, you see what uh Del D said? Hey, he uh-huh. said he stayed in uh Carolina. He got. So, or he had some of that uh old Hollinsworth shit. I know you was trying okay. to find food. You okay, know? okay. That's what's up. You still got some of that blood, Del D, bro? Just type it in the chat. Yeah. And then um, uh, I'm really looking for some uh, um some of some other shit though right now. You know, you, you know what, seven eight? Wait, I, I I be listening to you. You know what it'll probably be good for you also while you're starting up, and especially why since this stuff is kind of out there. Is investing in some of that frozen semen. You might get yeah. set it up for. That's what I was just about to say, bro. That's what I did, fam. I got frozen semen. I pay my storage every month. I might not do a, a breeding for another two or three years, four, five, six years, if I even do one. If I don't end up selling it later, but I have it right now. I got, I got frozen semen. On. Nice. Yeah, that's that's the yeah. As soon as you use it, you know, I'm gonna be there with my hand out. <laughs> yeah. I, I was looking. I got I like I got a, uh, I got this little uh a little bitch coming um within the next. I guess I don't know when the fuck is it gonna drop. You know what I'm saying whatever. But when I get the little bitch, she bred up real nice. Um, now when the time come, I'm going. I'm. I'm. I'm I'm a pretty shit I got. Hold on, hold on, bro. Hold on real quick, not to cut you off. But hey, uh, D Brown, delete that, bro. You know, you know, salute to you know their accomplishments and all they do. But yeah, delete that. That what you just wrote, family. You know, it ain't safe. It ain't safe. But well, don't nobody repeat that though. You know, don't say that shit out loud. But go ahead, bro. Oh yeah, I'm gonna say um um I'm gonna breathe, little bitch. I'm gonna get uh. If everything turned out right, but she bred up real nice, how I like it. And some real good foundation shit, but like, I'm gonna breed it to the shit I got from Buck, this boy Doc Holiday, eventually. But I also want, I was I was looking into some, um, some Hollinsworth bullshit, man, but you know, I don't know about that shit, bro, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I talked to some motherfuckers and motherfuckers talking about 10 stacks and shit like that. I'm like, look, man, you know, God damn. Yeah, damn trust me. Know. They talking about 10 stacks. And I, I don't even know if that's really that nigga. That could be his son or some shit. But regardless, you know what I'm saying? If I pay 10 G, I'm sorry. That motherfucker will have to do something, man. I mean, I mean. going to have to come help me work on these hemis. That motherfucker got to clean, clean up his own dog shit and everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, got got a, a, I, I paid opinion. three directly from the source, bro. I paid three stacks for the, for the, for the semen I got, but I paid from directly from the source of where it came from, uh, mm-hmm. who, who had pulled it, you know. And motherfucker called me probably a, a few months ago, like, man, I'll give you five for that shit. Uh, no, nah, I'm good, bro. I'm good. The good thing for, for the frozen semen is, especially why it's off a good dog, you know, you look at it as an investment, you know. I, you know, when I, I don't sell dogs right now, but, you know, if I'm still here and everything, you know, 15 years later, 10 years later, uh, I, I got some stuff I've invested in that I know that's gonna, you know, I, I'll, I, there's some old dog men I know they're not peddlers per se. I mean, you know, in the, the word, the negative term or whatever, 
but I don't mind selling no dogs and if frozen semen uh put put will put you ahead if you kind of and it just for me is I, I I like bulldogs I'm I plan on being around these dogs until the day I kick so you know the frozen semen that right now you got some stuff out there if you got a couple bucks me I, for me I would grab some you know because you know ten years down the line you know you might have a pup and or have have a breed off the frozen semen and you yeah. can make cook a, a couple bucks off it I don't have a problem. If you really love the dogs and stuff, and you sell selling good dogs or whatever, and keeping the blood alive, you know shit. And you know, so I, I see it as an investment, or you can keep it whichever way. You know what I'm saying? But you know, one thing I bought it. I one thing I do know in bulldogs is, especially from looking back hindsight, I used to re look at the uh, gazettes and stuff and the sporting dog journal. If I would have knew what I knew now, I would have got a lot of uh, frozen semen off dogs and um, you know. Uh, had a lot of draw dogs drawn of right now, you know what I'm saying? And there's some really good dogs out there. Like they got that crash semen that you somebody had uh, just mentioned. Um, my boy, they got, they got a lot of shit out there. They got uh, that motherfucker mechanic out there, pissed off mechanic out there. The frozen yeah, semen off of him. Offered me the macho buck semen. I, I turned it down. I'm not a, a you know. I just didn't have that. Wasn't my look. Man, turn it up, man. Go get it for your boy. I, I think it it went back to where it, it was supposed. Something happened. I, somebody said he still got it, but I I don't know. I gotta I talk to him. This oh, Macho Buck. Yeah, you can you can. Yeah, I know where to get Macho Buck steam, uh, steam from. Yeah. I know where yeah. to get that from. Yeah. He was talking shit anyway. Yeah, I, I gotta say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say, <laughs> Ram, you want that? You gonna have to do some ass kissing to get that. Cause I know who that is. Yeah, hell no. Nah. I got good dogs, semen off my own good dogs. We're just talking shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's what a lot of people don't understand, man. What also too is if we can chase, we chasing these good dogs. But a lot of times, man, we be having some good dogs sitting right in front of us. You know, if not most of the time. You know, chasing chase like, squash shit. What y'all think about uh, like for me is you know in messing with the breed. One thing I learned. Before all the years of being around them, it's patient. What y'all think about that?